few hundred fans here, um, all the players' families, offered students allowed, uh, some uh, club donors and things like that from the Terrier Club. As you see, uh, Darren Paschal, the captain for Wofford, coming out. Only one captain allowed out for the coin toss for each team. <laughs> and I'm trying to get a number on that from Mercer. L, 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 L. Out there for the coin toss. Again, the Southern Conference opener for both teams. Looks like Mercer has won the toss, and they will defer to the second half, so Wofford will take the football. And we will be ready to roll. Jim Noble, Tom Henson, our entire ESPN Plus crew, welcoming you to spring. It just seems so weird, man. It's just, you know, you're, usually you're, 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 you're winding down football season when basketball season starts. And this is exactly opposite. We're all kind of in knee-deep into the Southern Conference basketball season. Now football is starting up. As you get a look at Josh Conklin, 17 and 8, entering his third year here in Wofford, back to back Southern Conference champion here in Wofford, back to back Southern Conference championships in his first two seasons, back to back to back for the team that won a conference championship in Mike Ayers last year here at Wofford. What up, everybody? What up, what up, what up? So we do got some college football for the next month or two. Not the kind of football we want to watch. It's the F FCS. But nonetheless, we got some football. You know, normally we wouldn't have this right now. They're ready to go. They're ready to hit somebody. They're ready to tackle. They're ready to, to, to block. And I think this could be uh, something cool to watch. And, again, as we said in our opening on both TV and radio, Thrilled that these guys, these players and coaches are getting to experience this because there were times you didn't you didn't know when, when the when the season was gonna start or if it was gonna even start at all. I said your chronic took over after last fall, after fall 2019, 19, yeah. of course. I know what you meant. Chronic <laughs> is 0-3. The Bears played three games in the falls, losses to Jacksonville State Army and Athlete Christian. A couple of those, with the exception of the Army game, were were pretty close. So Caleb Dowden will kick things off for Mercer. All right, so you got Mercer out there in that, that orange is brown and white. All right, so you got Walford out there looking like Wake Forest, basically. Fantastic. That is natural grass. Andy Kaya and his staff did such a great job, but we are underway for the spring. That's going to be a touchback out of the end zone. It'll be Walford ball. First and ten. And the immediate question is, who comes out a quarterback for the Terriers? And now it looks like it'll be Jimmy Wyrick. Yeah, that's uh, indications we got earlier was that it would be Wyrick, the five uh, eleven sophomore out of Pickerington, Pickerington, Ohio. Easy for me to say. Um, and that is who it, it is. A rebuilt offensive line, but there's still some skilled players that. Uh, Maybe didn't start last year, but certainly have some experience. Nathan Walker and Jamari Broussard. Excuse me, that's Ryan Lovelace in the backfield. Behind Wyrick on first and 10 from the 25. Wyrick on the keeper might have gone the wrong way, trying to get away from the Mercer rush, and that's going to be a tackle for a loss. One yard loss on that is coming up to make that tackle for Mercer. Yep, busted play. <laughs> right off the bat, huh? Isaiah Watt 
Situation. We're gonna have a flag on the flag. All right. Okay. So we got a little flaggy flag. Let's see. See if they can get the third. In. All right. So they took back the flag. No, I ain't know how that choose. No. Hey, I All right, so we got a punting, we got a punting situation, three and out on the first drive. Walford about to kick the ball back to Mercer. Hold on, Did you know Geico sure. could save you hundreds on car insurance and more? So what are you waiting for, Captain Ahab, to help you find a parking spot? Fire, she blow! Well, loading zones are to the northern lots where there be spaces as big as whales! Geico. The President's Day sales event is at Greenway Kia of West Palm Beach. Get 0% APR for 60 months on a 2021 Kia K5 LXS. Okay, I'll mute the I'll mute the commercials. I'm pretty sure y'all don't care about no commercials. Unless y'all trying to get a Kia from West Palm Beach. A uh, five dollar donation from Bahamas. I appreciate that, Bahamas. Yeah, I appreciate that, boss. And that's a touchdown for the channel. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Bahamas. Yeah. You already know it's all about that you, baby. Even though there's a team up in Augusta that's trying to steal that Miami you trying to use our, you know, trying to use our you. They yeah, appreciate that, Bahamas. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll make sure I put your name in the cup. Um, at the end of the month, like I said, for members, I will put their name in the cup. I will be doing a um, a pull. I'll pull somebody's name from the cup and then you know send them out something. So I'll definitely put your name in the. All right, let's see the game's back on. I'm telling you, man, when you don't have no, um, when you don't have no, oh, fumble. Quarterback wasn't paying attention. They dropped, they pulled the ball out of his hand, but it looks like it may have um, recovered the ball. 
They're still saying they have it. And they do, although no official announcement yet. Yes, sir. Now the roll on hold everything. Brandon Brown was at the bottom of that pile. And I still haven't seen an official. Uh oh. I can tell you who slapped it out of there, though, and that was Michael Mason, who had an incredible 2019 fall. Oh, let's see what the ref. Okay, so turnover. Waffle, Waffle got the ball now. Quarterback fumbled. Waffle recovered. What up, James? How you doing, boss? Yo, yo, what's going on, um, Jalen? What's up, boss? Cedric in the building, what it do, boss? So I got some, you know, we got some, we got some FCS football going on. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be, I'm going to cover some of these games. Most of these games come on at the same time. Right now they got, Mer the Mercer game is on and they got like two other games on at the same time. They all start at one o'clock and then these, these games are on ESPN plus. So, you know, basically you can watch them off your, your computer or whatever, or your mobile device, if you got ESPN Plus. So at this moment right now, they got the, the, Merc, the Mercer Waffle game, and they got the Samford um, ETSU game. And then they got the Southern Illinois at North Dakota game going on. So all these games are going on at the same time. Two o'clock, um, Western Carolina at Foreman. That'll come on also. These are on ESPN+. Plus. There's more games on today, but it's pretty hard to find them based on the, the network that they're on. You know, they got these no-name networks that pretty much nobody watch. Side, and that's Mulligan. Urban Mulligan bursts off right tackle, and he's got another first down. And the Terriers are hopefully, y'all can hear the um, the audio. I hope it's not too low. Can't I can't put it up too too high because you know I want to get in trouble. But I remember seeing some things thinking, hey, this guy could do some stuff. And he showed it right there. He had 106 yards against Western Carolina. And again, I was hoping um, Jackson State played today, but they, they're playing tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So I might end up doing that game tomorrow, too. This time it's Lovelace who makes one cut, gets north and south. All right, so they look like they they about to try to get on the scoreboard. And the Waffer is um ranked number 17. So they do got a ranking system going for the um the FCS. All right, he runs the ball up the middle for a touchdown. That was the that, that hole was huge. That that hole was huge. I'm talking about throwing a hot dog a hot dog down the hallway. That's how huge that hole was just then. I'm just saying. Second possession for the Wofford Terriers. On to add the extra point is Dawson Hennis. He says FSU. We play Miami next week in basketball. We should go live. Man, y'all having a great season, FSU. Hats off to y'all. I give it to y'all. But Miami fans ain't trying to watch no damn basketball. I think we like 
I think we like three and three and forty five right now. <laughs> All right, so Waffles on the boards, you know, touchdown, 7-zip. Like I said, run up the gut. Most capable heavy duty pickup. All right, I'm pretty sure y'all don't want to hear no commercials. So far, so good in this game. It um it don't look it, it looks like a normal football game. It don't look it don't look high school footballish like, you know, most of these games normally do. You know, when you're watching the Miami game or Alabama game and all that, it kind of it kind of has it sets a different tone, but when normally in the regular season when you watch these games they look they look more like high school football, but not this one. This one actually got that college football feel to it. But you know, for those of y'all that can't see it, Wal Walfer to to me they look like Wake Forest. That's how their uniform set and everything. You know, that Wake Forest black and um gold. And then you got the the Mercer team that's looking more like a um, the Cleveland Browns type. Yeah, but like I said, these are F FCS schools. A lot of these schools um rescheduled their games for the spring. Remember back when they was having that Corona talk about you know moving games, moving games to the spring, and then all of that. But these teams went ahead and and went through with that, but. You know the regular um, Division One teams decide that no, they they just gonna play their regular season. All right, commercial still running. Oh man, so I'm, since I'm doing these games on and they're on ESPN Plus, I might have to um. What I'm gonna do next? I'm um I'm gonna get a TV hooked up to my monitor. That way I could just do the dual monitor double, so I could have the the stream yard on one side and I could have the the game playing on the other side. But I didn't think about that until now. But that's what I'm gonna do for the next couple of streams. Hopefully my kids be bad, so I'll just take their TV. Seven nothing, just like you draw it up over the last 440 days from right. practice, right? I need yeah, somebody to get a back to from me. You see the back of Urban Mulligan there, uh, redshirt so freshman out of here from Royal Branch High School. Dawson Hennis is going to boot it into that stiff wind moving left to right and coming up to catch it on the run at the 20 and a nice run back out past the 30. Michael All Campbell. right, so kickoff return back to the 30 yard line by Mercer. You know, it's funny that Brandon Brown, when Brandon Brown got the promotion to linebacker, I was like, wow, he's been a special team case. I wonder if they're going to have him stay on special teams. And they have indeed. And you, you can't afford to take too many guys off special teams when they become full-time starters because they're so good at what they It do. feels good to have some college football in this springtime, man. Long kick returns, long punt returns. It makes things hard on your defense. Looks like Carter Peavy's in there at quarterback number 15 as he's going to get a shot now and they'll give it into the middle of the line and not much there at all the middle of the whopper uh, Brian, uh, Brian Elijah Ball Tanner Barnes combining on that stop that is PVM but you're right the front does yeah, appreciate you for coming through three man three shout out turn tally their ground, only give up on a yard and a half on that carry Drew Chronic with the quick hook on Harris Frost after the turnover, but remains to be seen if we'll see Frost in there again. Now all of a sudden, Peavy sneaks up under center. A little different look from the Bears. But they were trying to get Wofford to jump. There's so plenty of time on the play clock. All right, so you got about 10 seconds on the play clock. I guess they try to get him jump offside. Ain't working. Get underneath the ball. Peavy under center. And in motion, takes the handoff. That was a slash off the left by Brandon Marshall with not much room again. Crashing down from that defensive end position was Mason. Brett Russell got in there as well. And Jay Hazel came up. And, uh, Jay, Jay Hazel, interesting. This guy started as a corner as a freshman, a true freshman, a number of games. Now he moves to safety. Now Miles Richards moves to safety. And a lot of youth at the corner position, although they got one better in there. Um, they're in task. All so right, let's see. Very, very well. All right, so let's see what Mercer going to do now. 
Third and seven. Third and seven. Uh, ball thrown short. So that'll put him at a fourth and seven, and it'll be a three and out. So some miscommunication by the quarterback and the wide receiver. You said Mercer. <laughs> uh, funny name. Yeah, a lot of these teams got funny names, man. I did a lot of research on all these teams today. Some of these names, like, I've never even heard before. Never. If I, if I wasn't looking to watch any football this spring, I wouldn't have probably ever heard of any of these teams. So as you can hear, we don't have an eight-game spring, which um, South Dakota yesterday, um, I think they beat, they beat somebody yesterday. Um, I forgot the name of them. But their season, their season kicked off last week on um, Valentine's Day. They had one game played. And this is this is considered week two for them in the F FCS. Any y'all want to try to make any score predictions for the hell of it? I know we, I know most of us don't know much about these teams. All right, so second and second and nine. Runs up the middle, maybe picks up a yard or two. Defense stuffed them right at the um, right at the line. Graduate transferred to FBS teams. You got Blake Gerasadi at Illinois, Josh Berger at Texas Tech. Bears are really bringing up the safeties, almost daring Wofford to throw it. And that's something that Josh Conklin and Wade Lang have talked about, the, the need and the ability to throw the ball when they need to and not just run the option time and time again. Byron is back to pass on third down. Looking left, and that is complete. And a nice grab out there by Sanders. Who All like right, so that's for a moment, but held on for the beautiful pass. First first catch for the first down. He bobbled the ball, but nonetheless, the ball never touched the ground. You know, good catch. Um, it's on ESPN three. ESPN three. Not three. I'm not three. I'm sorry. ESPN Plus. The game is on ESPN Plus. Um, OG Kane, what up, boss? Nah, this is not a um. This is it, well, it is spring game, but it's not a spring game. You remember um back when the Corona thing started and they didn't know if they want to have a season or not. Well, these are the teams that chose to move their season to the spring. So now they're playing their games, and they'll they'll play their their championship up to I think um. Up to, um, I think it's the 27th of um, April. So this season will run the next couple of weeks all the way till April 27th, if I'm not mistaken. So we do got, you know, quite a few games on today. I just know that four of the games that's on today is on ESPN Plus. I got ESPN Plus, so you know I talked to Sergeant AR10. Um, right now, I think he's helping one of his cousins to move, but these games, me and him, will be doing them together. All right. So, do you go for it or do you point it away? 
the you're... league. I think Auburn's going to go for this. Terriers were very, very effective on fourth down last year as you see Jimmy Wyrick get out of trouble here. Did a nice job. Yeah, he had his head down, got what he could, and puts himself and his team in a position to pick up this fourth down. It's a tick over a yard, but we'll call it fourth and one from the 42. So fourth and one from the 42. Uh, I hit CJ up this morning. I ain't getting no answer. So, you know, he probably sleep. You know, CJ be on that late night tip. So he probably, he'll probably wake up in the next hour or so. <laughs> Whenever he do, he'll hit me back. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that earlier, Jordan. Um, Jacksonville, Jackson State, I'm sorry. They play tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Um, I do have a live show tomorrow at 4. So most likely uh, we'll talk about that that game um, at 4. That'll be a part of the, the college football start. But Jackson, Jackson State? Out of all of these um, FCS schools, they're the most popular right now. They're the one that everybody's talking about on Twitter and everything. But you already know where that comes from. Prime time. All right, so I know y'all don't want to hear about no damn Geico. Yeah, so um, let me pull up the other one that's going on right now. Let me pull up the other one, see if I can get some scores. It's ESPN is real disrespectful. I ain't going to lie, man. ESPN is really disrespectful when it comes to these um these FCS schools, these FCS games. <laughs> Real disrespectful. They're not trying to broadcast. They're not trying to put them up there or nothing. I, if they do have them on there, they're making it real hard to find. All right, so they finally updated it, but they're not showing nothing. Okay, so I found I found them. I found them. They consider this okay, so ESPN would consider this um week three or four. Okay, so they had um, a game yesterday that they put up like 60 points in that game. Happy to see fans and cheerleaders and above all the players who have really, really suffered through this whole pandemic being able to go out there and show what they could do. PB stays in for the Bears and incomplete looking for DeAndre Johnson. Out of the left flat, Harrison Cross played the first series for Mercer. Turned the ball over on a strip sack, and then Phoebe's come in for the last two series. It looks like he threw a good ball there that Johnson just couldn't hang on to. Puts him behind the sticks a little bit here, second and ten. Offered sport after a turnover on their second drive as giving it up the middle. This PB a nice little push by the Mercer offensive line. That's Johnson again. Johnson will do a little bit of everything. He he lines up in the position that they call Joker, which means he rushes. He's a receiver. He's also a kickoff returner. 
sophomore, 5'7", 175 from Reedsville, Georgia. You wonder how a guy that little can run between the tackles. They really miss Tyree Devison, of course, who is in the transfer portal after being their leading rusher the past couple of years. He did play in the fall, but opted not to play for the Bears in the spring. It's third down and a long four. PB rolls out to his left. Got a man, and that's complete for a first down to Johnson out across the 30 to the 33-yard line and a gain of seven. First, first down for the Bears, and that was a well-designed play, executed well by PB. Is he in a little bit of trouble? He had some pressure on him, and uh, but was able to avoid it. All and, right, uh, so nice, nice pass on, nice there. run. Trying to flush him out of the pocket. Miles nice Richardson. throw on the run. Tackle for Whopper, but not before the Bears got. OG Kane, what's going on with you, boss? Give to the left and plenty of running room up the left sideline and another first down. Whopper uh, did not see uh, Kendra Clark. Clark at all. He's the uh, transfer from Appalachian State. Graduate transfer. And watch, they all went left and he went right. They sealed the defense. Yeah, they sealed the edge really well there on the left side. Nice. Here, Anora was able to push him out of bounds, but not before the game of 14. First and 10. Bears from the 46 yard line. First and getting a little bit of a rhythm offensively. Yeah, see, I got ESPN. Um, I got ESPN Plus, but I got it as a package. I got it with um Hulu and um Disney Plus and ESPN Plus. They come as a three way package for like 14 bucks. Which you know, if you know me, you know I got four four girls, so they watch all that Disney stuff. So I got Disney Plus for them. Hulu, I watch a lot of stuff on Hulu. So and ESPN also. So you know, it works out for me. Fifteen bucks a month, three different servant, you know, services can be the. Talk about staying at home. That's what you have to do. You you start. Letting your eyes wander and don't play assignment football. That could be a big play. But T.J. Neal, solid assignment football, stayed where he was supposed to stay and made a great field, great play in the open field. And the other game that's going on right now is Samford versus East Tennessee. Samford's up 14-0. to And then you have Southern Illinois, North Dakota. Score is 7-7 to with four minutes left in the first quarter. This time we've got a whistle. And the game from um 12 o'clock, Moorhead State, zero. Um, James Madison, 28. Is, and that game is at halftime. I don't know whether there was something they saw or just the wrong personnel on the field for Wofford. I think Mercer, when they shifted, it got into something that maybe Wofford wasn't familiar with. And, and you know, don't give them a chance to get a cheap first down here. Yeah, man, that that pretty much sucks. Get your alignment correct and see if you can stop them here on third and five. By comparison to the Wofford offense, the defense is a bunch of grizzled veterans. They returned five starters. We right? talked about how the defense. Yeah, like I said, though, if you if you have kids or whatever, it's good to get the package deal where you get ESPN Plus. You can use that for yourself. You get Disney Plus. You know, use that for your kids. You know, Disney Disney Plus got all the Marvel movies, all that good stuff on there, too. So it's not just Disney stuff on there. And then um, Hulu, Hulu services. You can get that, too. All three of them packaged, bundled together, 15 bucks a month. It's like $5 a piece. You can't beat it. You know, if you got Netflix, then, you know, you're paying about $10 a month already. So you get three services in one as a bundle. So. You know, that's what I do. That's right. <laughs> Something I've never had trouble with. We have plenty of room between the pockets in this booth. I can attest to that. All right, third down for Mercer. Third and five, just over midfield into Wofford territory. Yeah, but it's it's good to have ESPN Plus for moments like this. You can go back and watch all the 30 30s, 30 for 30s and stuff like that. To his left, now flushed out to his right. Being run down from behind. Can he get rid of the ball? He does. Long pass, and that is going to be. Oh, man. Great catch down. Oh, man. The busted play just turned into a big old, big old chunk of yards. That is the 
is a gain of 31. Almost a busted play turned into a 31 gainer. Nice throw, bobbled the ball, counted it. So I got to get a PC port. That way I can hook my monitor up to my my TV. Do I think they'll be a top 20 team this season? Nah. I don't think that that, that I don't think that coaching staff's going to come in there and get that get that going that fast. How great is it that we get to tell everybody how Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance? I give um pay for what you need. I give them like a year. Sorry? Give them like a year to get their stuff together first. But I I don't believe that UCF, you know, just by adding um Malzahn and you know, T Will, I don't think they're just gonna jump into being a top twenty team. I think they got some some kinks to work out. They're gonna have to um, basically form their own team, get some recruits in there, and stuff like that. You know, I don't think it's a just because you get Gus in there the first year. I don't think it's gonna be all that great for them, but. Recruiting wise, you know, for the next upcoming season or so, I think they'll be good. I think they'll start building building something, you know, something to go off. Okay, so they for those of y'all that watch Snowfall, that'll be on um that's on um Hulu or whatever services you watch it on TV or whatever the it'll pick back up on February 24th so yeah I don't, I don't think they'll be top 25 this season but I think they'll the um, towards the end of the season they'll probably start working their way in there probably get some good recruits over there in um at Central Florida you know, you got good coaches with a good destination. Yeah, and don't don't forget about you USF. You know, they might not have a Gus Malzahn or a T. Will, but nonetheless, they're right there in Tampa. You know, right there in Central Florida, nice destination. You know, we got a couple guys from Miami even went up there with um, Christian Williams and. Um, Former Miami um, Hurricane quarterback, um, Jaron Williams. So we, they got some. They got some players up there. They got some people that wanted to go there. It's a Sunshine State. You know, if you can't make it to Florida State, Miami, or Florida, 
there all there are still some choices down here. All right, so game is almost back on, so I'll put the audio. I'll put the audio back as soon as these commercials get off. You know, I don't want to have you guys sitting here listening to these commercials. Plus, I want to get flagged for commercials. All right, so game's back on. As we enter the second quarter, the Terriers lead the Mercer Bears seven to nothing. But the Bears All right, are so marching. They've got the ball and offer Terriers. Fifteen minutes, the second quarter. Five yard line, second down and seven. Mercer got the ball at the twenty-five. Second and thirteen. Let the last couple of drives for the Bears. He has the shotgun, draft the pass. Lofty one to the right corner. Oh, throwing for the end zone. Oh, complete. dropped it. Would have been a touchdown if he would have caught it. Anderson, sophomore, just up the road in Bowling Springs is his hometown. Stayed with him the whole way. Hey Jordan, what's up with um? What's up with FAMU? Why they not playing? Below ground level, kind of when you go to that end of the field, you know that wind is playing tricks with that. It's pushing it away from the field. Exactly right, Jim. Um, nah, I'm in West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. That's like less than an hour away from Miami. Pass. He's got pressure for the backside. Mason makes the hit. That ball is loose again. Second time, Michael Mason to strip the ball away. And uh, I think Mercer fell on this one. I think they called ruled it incomplete. Ball might have been, or arm might have been doing forward, but either way, Michael Mason, they can't block him, can they? Wreaking havoc on the Okay, so let's see if this was a fumble. A fast move. Yeah, ball's yeah, moving I forward. The ball was going forward. That's a good call by the officials. All right, so incomplete, incomplete pass. pass but that's the second time today Michael Mason's got his hand on the football and uh, making something happen. Nate and Dade, what's going on, boss? Yard field goal attempt upcoming from Caleb Dowden. So we got some football here in the um football here in the spring, man. It's FCS, you know, nothing major. They got three different games, four different games going on right now. So the ones that's on ESPN, you know, ESPN Plus that I could watch, you know, I'm a broadcast. Um, Sergeant AR10 will be with me doing these shows, but you know, right now he's helping a cousin move, so I'll be I'll be doing these by myself. momentum changing play here. In fact, that's a good point. Here's another look at it. That's, oh, that's, close. Close. that's closer than I thought from yeah. the previous angle. That, that's what they're looking at. You that, what a good point. That ball right there. Yeah, he has hand started is moving. empty. That's a fumble, and, a, and I think Beckley recovered it for Wofford. You know, you talked about review. Yeah. Ironically, Last fall was supposed to be the first year that every it's a um Brian was it's a gift and a curse at the same time. The uh, it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift that you know when I do do get time to go to games, you know I could drive down there and go. But it's a curse at the same time because you spend so much money doing it. <laughs> so it's a gift and a curse. See, for me, for me, it's not a normal just get up and go to the game. For me, it's a do I want to take do I want to take the kids with me? Do I want to get a babysitter? That kind of thing. So it's already gonna run my pockets. So it's a gift and a curse at the same time. Now, if, if I didn't have any kids, oh, I'll be at every game. You know that it'll be all just a gift. <laughs> This long to look at it, it typically means that they're trying to make sure was there a recovery? Where is the ball? What how much time is on the clock? All of those things. If it's just an incomplete pass as they ruled it on the field, you just you don't have to write all this stuff down. Looks like the Wofford offense is ready to go out there. Well, I mean, kind of looks like a commingling of all. All right, so the referees just on the right side now. talking right now. People in the press box, it's a first down walk. They're trying to see if it's a first down or not. They're checking the spot. Halftime score from Cullowee in basketball. That's okay. Brace yourself, Mr. Noble. 
Wofford 50, Western Carolina 27. Wow. They may never let us go to another we, game again. We may have just been <laughs> excommunicated. All right, for the other three games, um, James Mace, uh, Madison, still 28-0. to zero. They about to start the um, – they just started the second half. Samford 14, East Tennessee 0. Still the same. They entered the um, second quarter. And second quarter also 7-7, seven seven, Southern Southern Illinois, North, North Dakota. All right, so the referees just gave Walford the first down. I think you said John Beckley is the carrier that fell on it. So there's – look at big number 99 getting some – yeah, it's on ESPN Plus. If you have ESPN Plus, then you can watch these games. They're streaming. They're streaming on ESPN Plus. Yeah, all these games, they're streaming them on ESPN Plus. The, all the other ones, the, I've seen some channels that I've never heard of. All right, so he overthrew the receiver. A nice spiral pass. Just a little bit overthrown. Ball would have been more, more catchable for the defender than the receiver, though. All it's right, so thrown back by the defense ball comes out, but I think that's going to be down by contact. Yeah, so Mercer tries to run, uh, not Mercer, uh, Wofford tried to run the ball, you know, stuffed in the backfield for a loss. Lovelace and Nathan Walker kind of after that play got together, and uh, I don't know if everybody was on the same page. Walker, although listed running back, Wofford doesn't list a true fullback like they used to do back in the Mike Ayers, you know, wishbone days, flexbone days, but. Uh, Walker is basically a fullback, although he's got great speed and can run on the outside as well. Terrier's now facing third and long after the turnover. Third and 12 to be exact. Throw 25. Byron back to pass. Quick throw to the left. A return, kind of a back shoulder throw. That is broken up. That one looked good for a moment. Yeah, TJ Luther for Luther. Maybe. That'll bring up a kicking situation for Wofford. Not sure if a Mercer guy got his hand in there, but that looked like it. I, I, I thought the same thing. It looked pretty well thrown. Yeah, getting his hand in there, making a nice defensive play was Michael Campbell, a junior out of Darien, Georgia. Timed it perfectly. Um, if he doesn't get his hand in there, that's a completion. Landon Parker is back to punt for the second time, this time punting with the wind, standing at his own 10 yard line. Landon Miller back for the Bears on his own 35. That one's up a low liner right at Miller. He'll have a chance to run this back to the 31. All right, so. Special teams coverage by Wofford. Yeah, Tahira Noor. Yeah, nice well, uh, I was just about to say that, Pope. Um, yeah, Pope. So the guy from Texas AM, um, Ishmael. Aristad. Couldn't do anything with this other one. It's yeah, so apparently he's going to be the assistant coach. Now, from what I read earlier is he's finalizing a deal to become Miami's assistant coach, you know, emerged as a um, star analyst for um, Texas A&M and was considered one of the program's best recruiters. He was deep recruiting. He has deep recruiting ro um, roots or whatever in South Florida, which make him – Attractive to Manny Diaz. That's the report that was, you know, said on that. So, you know, we're going to get an analyst out of um, Texas A&M in Ishmael or Stodd or whatever. I'm going to have to hear somebody say his last name so I can get it right. See, that's why I like guys like Travis Williams. <laughs> it's nice and easy to say their names. <laughs> 
Yeah, but this guy might be the new linebacking coach. An assistant coach to Manny Diaz, you know. You know how that goes. Coverage. There was nowhere for Peavy to try to throw that ball, and that's the question for the Terriers. You know, the, the young guys who move to safety. Hey, if I don't know why I'm coming over there, I ain't coming over there. What? If you don't know why I'm here, come over there for me now. Come over there. Well, come over there. All right. Well, well, have a good day. Good night. Good bye. You know, I'm going. So the Terriers will have decent field position. When we come back, they've also got a 7 nothing lead by virtue of an Urban Mulligan five-yard touchdown romp of the first quarter. <sighs> I hate when people do that. My mom just called me, told me to come by the house. Okay, well, why? Just come by the house. No, I ain't just coming by the house. Tell me why I'm coming by for what? Is it important? Is it, is it a waste of my time? Am I going to come over there and be like, really? This is what I came over here for? Why are you ain't telling me over the phone? All right, let's get let's get all this commercial. We don't want to listen to no commercials. When the commentary come back on, I'll pop them back up. Like I said, if I'm gonna get flagged, I'm not gonna get flagged for no commercials. So, analysts out of Texas A&M. Uh, huh? We just went from T. Will to an analyst. At least with T. Will, we we had some. I had some kind of background to go by. Now I got to go do my, my research on this Ishmael guy because, you know, I didn't even see him as a candidate. They must have went on uh, Indeed.com and found his resume or I mean, if he coached DBs, then we already got um, DVD and um, C-Rob. Not C-Rob. I meant T-Rob. So I don't know why we would need the DBs coach. You know, we need a linebacker coach. So I don't know why Manny would hire a DB coach. That That's just stupid to me. But nonetheless, that's, that makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. I guess he want to stick to um. I guess he want to stick to Packy then. Put Packy back at linebacking coach. If if that's the case, I mean, what well, what well, we need another DB coach for? We got two on hand already. Yeah, they need to get that together though. Yeah, I was hoping he'd hurry up and hire a linebacking coach so we can at least, you know, get this thing started, get get the kids accustomed to this person, get them to get to know each other and get to work already. You know, they're doing mat drills right now. So, you know, if he's going to hire a linebacking coach, it would be perfect timing right now. Let let them kids get used to him. Let them go in there and, um you know, set his philosophies. But that's Manny. That's Miami being Miami. Don't want to sit there and wait till the last second. 
Next thing you know, we're going to be stuck with another uh, a, a coach from Jacksonville State or something. Exactly. You mean, I mean, you can't blame Travis. Can't blame Travis Williams for wanting to advance his career. And not only that, he's doing it with somebody he's comfortable with, with Gus Malzahn. But nonetheless, we got to move on from him. He's gone. He's already there. We got to find somebody to replace him. Now, there's plenty of coaches out there that we're looking at and that they've mentioned. But when, they, when we go out and hire a guy from, um, you know, Texas A&M uh, analyst as an assistant coach. I'm like, okay, you know, he's been, he's been dealing with DBs. But we need a linebacking coach. We don't need Packy. We've seen what Packy can do. We'll pass on Packy. Packy is the reason why we're in the predicament that we're in right now anyway, looking for a linebacking coach. He lucky, man, he didn't just fire his ass talking about some um special teams. So, Hell, I think anybody could damn near coach special teams. I could go out there and tell them, hey, catch the ball and run this way, run that way. You know, follow your blocks to the left, follow your blocks to the right, follow them up the middle, wherever they wherever they go sit. Man, man. Is to the left side it, it does, and it's just crazy to me how you gonna hire a guy just just for the striker position. Like none of the like if you don't hire if you hire a linebacker coach, he can't teach the striker nothing. What a throw that time by Jimmy Wire in great protection by his offensive line. Gave him a pocket to throw out of, and Wiry just steps into that thing and a ball and a rope. Watch this hit he just right at the end. He got lit up. Of 28 for the Terriers. Lance Wise applied that in for Whopper. Yeah, so for the second time. I'm guessing we got Ishmael just for um just for recruiting purposes, I guess. This game is looking pretty interesting. I ain't gonna lie, man. I can't even tell the difference between them and um regular Division One right now. Our spring game won't be till um our spring game won't be till um April. Won't be until April. They haven't even announced the date, but won't be till April. This is um FCS football. This is basically those teams that decided that they were going to have the regular season in 2020 and move their season to the spring. So this is what we're having right now. A little spring football, FCS style. You know, no, no major teams, but I'm pretty sure it's to the FCS, they're major teams. <laughs> All right, so Wolford's going to try to make it 10-0. Kick is up. Kick is up and good. It, it is good. So it's a 10 10 to 0 ball game so far. You got 7 7 minutes and 24 seconds left in the second quarter.
yeah, man. Like I said, though, we need a linebacking coach. I understand why Manny bringing in this guy. I guess he, he wants some good recruits. He wants to recruit the state of Florida a lot better. And bringing somebody from Texas A&M that, you know, does great at that is a good addition to the team. But, you know, we're we still looking to see who he's going to bring in as a linebacking coach and not just hand it off to um, Packy because I'm pretty sure nobody wants to see Packy coach linebackers. So who we hired, his name is Ishmael. Ishmael Aris, Aristide or whatever. Whatever his last name is. He's, a, I guess, an assistant coach now at Miami. But he, he's, he was an analyst for Texas A&M. I guess he's a great recruiter. And you say at linebacker thoughts, OG is the main problem. Yeah, definitely is. They'll probably announce on um on Monday, sometime during this week, who the line the next linebacking coach gonna be. Most likely your boy Packy, if Manny don't decide to hire nobody. Um, most analysts, all they do is study defenses, you know, um, defensive tendencies, especially of the other teams. Like, you know, if Miami played Florida State, an analyst probably would, you know, go over film from Florida State, set up, help set up game plans and stuff like that. They're more, they're more off the field. They're more off the field than on the field, to be honest. Say we we can't hire no more on to two out. That was the last spot for coaching. Well, well, there you have it. You said it. Packy will be the linebacking coach. Freaking terrible, man. Just terrible. Marketing's run with six fifty left in half, and this time it's with the other side. And how about that shoestring tackle? Coming up from the corner position and making the play is Donovan Anderson, the senior. You know, and what you love to see there, Donovan Anderson comes up, run support, great tackle, lost his shoe. He didn't throw the shoe. He left the shoe on the ground. You hear, you hear that, Florida? Because honestly, who throws a shoe? Who All throws the a shoe? <laughs> <laughs> they, the FCC taking shots at the Gators, y'all. Florida truck, are you hear this? You hear that, Florida trucker? They making fun of the FCC, the FCS, I'm sorry, making fun of Florida. Hold on, go back 10 seconds. Literally lost his shoe, man. Uh, can be a first down, but the defense, you know, has the opportunity to execute as well, and they did a uh, great job on that play. The Greg Google will punt 
Demore Van Cleef back for Wofford. Demore Van Cleef has 11 career touchdowns, one as a punt returner in game last year. Google under a little bit of pressure gets it off, and this should be returnable. No big You want to go to warm up? You want to go to warm up? You want to go to warm up? Down to about the 30 yard line. It'll be Terrier football from that point. You love to see Van Cleef back there. He, he can do so many things. A former Mr. Kentucky football out of Danville, Kentucky, that wasn't recruited by the big schools. And Wofford said, Thank you very much. We'll Absolutely. take it here in Yeah, T. Will definitely would have wrapped up a good, six rushing touchdowns good spot for us. Years, four receiving touchdowns, one punt return touchdown. <laughs> What's going on, Lou? Man, Augusta. The thieves, the thieves of Georgia. I can't believe they tried that. Not only did they steal our you and made it two ugly colors, they go out and they use the hashtag all about the you. Seriously. Not only that, too, they're being, their jerseys are being made by Adidas. So I'm pretty sure that Miami probably knows something about this. Because, I mean, if Adidas is doing this and Miami knows nothing about it, then, you know, that's that's kind of fishy. But nonetheless, Augusta United um, graduate, graduate Academy is using the Miami Hurricane U. They got the, the colors that's red and I want to say dark blue. They're using our slogan, it's all about the U. You know, this is a this is a school, a uh, uh, in institution, a college institution. So it's not like one of those little pop Warner schools, you know, that use the U or whatever. It's not one of those younger, you know, schools or high schools or anything. This is actually a college institution. So for them to use the symbol and change the color and use the same slogan. Damn, you know that that just <laughs> that sucks. He said Augusta, um, Augusta United. Yeah, they wish, as you can see, they wish they was Miami. But I guess they, I guess I understand though, because you know Georgia loves Miami, so I guess they wanted to bring a piece of Miami to Georgia. And what what better way to do it than to steal our Logan? Steal our logo and our slogan and bring it to the state of Georgia. I, you know what? I just thought about it. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know that's your hometown, Lou. You should you should find that um you should find that institution. Go over there and, and, and have a good talk with them, you know. Get them to put the Georgia G up there instead. And um maybe paint that one. Gator orange and green, orange and blue. Put a gator orange and blue green up there and see how, see how the rest of uh, Georgia would react to it. That'll that'll be funny to have the Georgia G instead of the Miami U up there. So Miami need, Miami need permission from Augusta United. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of um. A lot of nipwits up there in Georgia that's going to be like, well, we was using the U first. It belongs to us. It was on. Um, I bet. I bet Miami took that U from Georgia. I guess they took it from Augusta United. You know, that's going to be. That's going to be a thing of the future. I can already see it. Speaking of football, though, um, these commentators were just taking a taking a couple shots at the Florida Gators. <laughs> when I guess one of the guys on the field lost a shoe and nobody picked it up and threw it, so they decided to make a joke out of it. He said, Manny is a loyal friend. There's one thing for sure. Yeah. Like I said, instead of going out and finding an actual linebacker coach, he goes out and hire a freaking analyst from Texas A&M. So now we already know Packy's going to be pushed back into the linebacking coaching position. And he's, as you can see, our linebackers for the past what couple of years now has not been getting developed or nothing. 
Packy ain't it, but Manny being Manny, let me put my best friends in these positions so it'll be tougher for me to fire him when it comes time to. <laughs> he said, this is your only one and keep my hometown name out your mouth. According to, um, like I said, according to Augusta United, that is no longer your hometown, sir. Augusta is officially Miami. We officially own Augusta. We got our own piece of the pie in Augusta, in Augusta United Graduate Academy. They couldn't use the G, so they had to go with the U. It says Ishmael played DB and um, outside linebacker when he played. Hmm. But did he coach? That's the question. Did he coach linebackers? You would think we want somebody more of an expertise in coaching, you know, linebackers. So, T2, while all these coaches hire people they know and some type of previous relationship, just saying, look at any staff. Right. I understand. I mean, T. Will, for example, goes to, goes to go coach at UCF with Gus Malzahn. He's been working under Gus Malzahn for six years and all that. It's, uh, I understand. They're friends. It'll be probably harder for Gus Malzahn to fire T. Will than Manny would fire T. Will. So, for T. Will, it's a, it's a promotion. And it's somebody that he knows. Okay, I get it. For a lot of coaches know each other. They they hire they hire because they're comfortable with person and they feel like they could trust that person. Okay, I get it. But we see the tendencies that from Miami that that normally don't work. You got Mark Ricks that got his son there, won't fire him. Would rather retire than fire him. You got freaking Al Golden with. I don't even want to talk about the other guy. He wouldn't fire him, save his life. And it, and this is just it's an ongoing cycle. Bergy, what's going on, boss? How you doing? Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen, Bergie. Packy will be handling linebackers. Our linebackers will be mediocre. One minute, 35 seconds left in the very entertaining first half here in Spartanburg. Your score, Wofford 10. <laughs> he, said, he said he tried. He didn't try hard enough, OG. He should have tried again. Manny teaching us how to quit. First you get knocked down, get yourself up, and try again. Manny got knocked down, he just stayed down. He don't. He, he decided that he didn't want to try to go find another linebacking coach, and there are plenty of options out there. We all can see him. We all can see the writing on the wall. Hell, he could have went and got C. Rob from up up in um, Gainesville, Florida. He could have. He could have flipped his contract. Shoot, what what he would pay a linebacker at Miami is way more than what C. Rob was getting at Florida. So I know he would come. But that's Manny being Manny. <sighs> well, like you said, he calling the plays this season. So when push comes to shove, ain't nobody else to blame but him. Manny Diaz being Manny Diaz. Man, I don't care what he did. I don't care who he, what going on. This man ain't bring us a linebacking coach. He let T will, he let T will be the end of the linebacking coach position. When T will left, he ain't bring us another linebacking coach. 
man, they need to try harder. He ain't had to bring don't don't bring us no analysts from Texas A&M. We don't we don't want we, that ain't what we want. Manny, you've been giving the fans what they want. Well, give us what we want again. Stop playing with us. <laughs> oh, you said because you ain't happy. They ain't right. I ain't happy, man. I'm I'm sitting back waiting to see who we gonna have come in here and 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 coach these linebackers and get these linebackers up and and have this being linebacker you again, like T. Will says. And now we ain't getting a linebacker coach. We getting a guy that's a uh, a recruiter. We're getting a guy to come in here, help recruit linebackers, and bring them in for packing and make them mediocre. I don't want to say mediocre yet. Packy has done a decent job with the strikers thus far. Uh, I want a certified linebacker coach with some experience, with some with a resume that shows some kind of development. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, gee, say I'm spoiled, man. Man, look, man, Manny been, Manny is like a, like a dad that been giving you what you want for the past two years for Christmas. This time around, he trying not to, he, he, he thought, he, he, I, you know what, I've been giving them too much. It's time for me to give them a little tough love. We don't want no tough love. Give us what we want. Get us a great linebacking coach with some experience that can recruit. We ain't asking for too much. Now, if I told you, hey, Manny, I want an um, ACC championship. I want to be 12-0. and 0. I want to be a national champion by the end of the season. Maybe I'm asking for too much. But to bring us a decent linebacking coach, is that too much? Is that too much of a job for Manny? We need to send, we need to send Manny to Mercer. is perfect. So the Terriers have jumped out here. Spring football agreeing with at least one team on the field here. Your score. All right, right, so you got a um, 17 to 0. Wofford's up on Mercer. Did you know Geico could save you hundreds on car insurance and a whole lot more? So what I do you bet they for? can. Hip hop group tag team to help you. You say y'all need on the field wins against anyone good. That's every team. It's not just Miami, it's every team. Did you have the addition of soap? Oh. Massive improvement in linebacker play. Is it still a bad move, or because we want? I want a linebacker coach, Bergie. I understand analysts. I understand what they do, and this that's great. But I need somebody on the field that's been proven to develop players, develop linebackers to make line make. Future prospects wants to come here because they know they will be developed by somebody who has a, a proven track record. I'm not asking for Nick Saban or the whole Clemson defense or anything like that. I'm not asking for their staff. I'm asking for somebody just with a little experience in a in a position that we well needed at. Exactly. That's how I feel right there. Linebacking coach should have been hired. Period. When he hired T. Will, that's what that's what it was. You know, that's a position of need. You hired it. So now that that position is not occupied, why not go back and try to hire somebody for that? If that's the case, you should have never hired T. Will in the first place. You should have just hired the uh, analyst, and we would have had this analyst this whole time.
breaking a tackle, getting all the way out close to the 30-yard line. Brandon Marshall, not the Brandon Marshall. Not the, they're Brandon Marshall. Uh, nobody it's killed Manny after three, losing to Florida. Plays, it was the first game of the season. We had freshman quarter. We had fresh quarterback in there, and we almost beat Florida. Nobody killed him after losing to Florida. They killed him after losing to FIU. They killed him after losing to Duke, um, Louisiana Tech. Nobody killed them for losing to Florida. Florida is not the cream of the crop on anybody's schedule. Nobody, nobody killed them for losing to North Carolina. That was a road game. That was um a close game. I think we lost that game by what two points. Nobody killed them for that. They killed them after the the consistent losses, the back and forth with the different quarterbacks, whether it's Nicole C. Perry or Jaron Williams. The lack of offense, you know, the, the offensive line suck. That's what they killed Manny for. And what Manny do every season, as we've seen, is go out and hire improvements. I thought the, the hire of T-Wheel was great. T-Wheel's gone. We over it. Get over it. Move past it. But go out and hire somebody to replace T-Wheel. That's all I'm saying. Now, I'm going to say this. If if Packy go out there and he develop these linebackers and these linebackers look great and they look like they've been, they're improving, I will put my own foot in my mouth. I will ex- I will say, hey, man, when we hired this analyst and we didn't get a linebacker coach and we gave it to Packy, I was pissed. I was talking trash. Packy proved me wrong. Foot in my mouth. But right now, at this moment, I ain't happy with that. I'm pretty sure a lot of fans ain't happy with that. Could be wrong. This is a wait and see kind of thing. Oh, you say y'all tripping by recruiting, y'all tripping by coaches, y'all tripping by chicken taco. <laughs> <laughs> you are driven by selling them. <laughs> Ain't no pleasing, y'all, man. I, I'm like the little rapper, man. I just want to roll it, roll it, roll it with a dab of wrench. Say <laughs> so Florida's better than Miami. Man, bro, bro, come on, bro. At this moment, we're in a better predicament than um y'all, even without a linebacker coach. Y'all got a coach that's a, 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 a straight clown. He went to FSU when they was a clown school. You got one of the best recruiters in the country in Dan Mullen's wife, and y'all still can't win. Oh. Said Miami losing big without King or with King. Florida losing with whatever they got. Florida always go out there and put one foot forward. Say T two I know you've seen Florida wearing handcuffs at practice. Check your Instagram. Oh snap. Nineteen seconds left. I'm sure they're figuring and now Wofford is going to take their final time out of the first half. I think Wofford thought they were gonna punt it. That's why Van Cleve was out there, but now with a fifty three yard into the wind, put him back there under the goal post. Let him catch it and see if you can pull an Auburn versus Alabama. Yeah, that's a, it's a long um, kick anyway. Jordan, I don't see what you're talking about. 
to the kicker. You might have to send that to me. Take a pretty prodigious boot to get it there, and if that ball falls short, it's returnable. And then the other thing you worry about if you're Robert is just hold your water. Don't 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 jump off sides or anything. Even though yeah, whatever it is that you're talking about now, about Florida, you're gonna have to send that to me. I don't I don't really follow Florida like that. I like to talk trash to Florida, but I don't really keep up with them. And it was, it was gonna be, it's gonna be a 53 yarder if they do it, try to attempt it. This is it. What the guy's leg strength is. Uh, a lot of college kickers, they can, you know, 55 and in, they, they feel pretty comfortable. But into the breeze. Okay, let me see what you're talking about here. Change the return guy, TJ uh, Luther is going back there now. Luther is usually the kickoff return man, and Van Cleve usually the. The punt returner. So he's used to standing in the end zone and fielding the the ball. And they've now bringing the <laughs> offense back on the field. The TJ Luther has never run faster than to get off on the uh, field and now fourth down. They're all through fourth and ten. Hey y'all go. Okay, so um All right, so so we got some information here. Um Cole Perry just sent me this, so Texas A&M Ishmael is expected to join the Miami staff to coach linebackers. Packy will coach. Well, he he'll be coaching the um the outside linebacker, outside. So Packy will coach um the inside, inside linebacker and strikers. So basically, we got a, we got him as a linebacking coach. So he will be an outside linebacker coach. So it's not just a he's not just hired as an analyst. So we do have an outside linebacker. He's he's here for an outside linebacker coach. Okay, so he's not just coming in here as an analyst, okay? So he is he is coming in to coach linebackers. Manny Diaz, I apologize. I jumped the gun on you a little bit. I was about to rip you a new one. I'm sorry. Yeah, so they will be coaching them linebackers together. Okay, okay, okay. I feel a little bit better now. Feel a little bit better. I, I'm I'm glad we just didn't hire this guy as an um, analyst and then put Packy over all the linebackers. He'll be coaching the outside linebackers. So it 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 it's 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 better. It's all right. It's okay. It's cool. We're gonna check out this Ishmael guy. Uh we'll we'll check him out tomorrow. <laughs> he said I'm thinking about I'm thinking about tacos. See the, the thing is I'm watching this game and I'm try I'm streaming this and you know normally when I see stuff like this I go and I do my own research. I probably read about three, four, five different articles. The you know, find out what's really going on, get like six, seven different perspective on it. And then I'll talk about it because I don't want to, you know, jump out here and be putting out false information. But that's a perfect example of false information, not knowing exactly what's going on and then just start talking about it. So Manny Diaz, I know you'll probably never hear this little, um, this little stream about a Mercer and a uh, Wolford. So, but if you ever decide that you want to sit down and watch a stream about Mercer and Wolfer, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, man. Yeah, sometimes I do jump the gun. I ain't going to lie on that, OG. I do jump the gun sometimes. Especially when it's something that, you know, it's exciting. Cause you know, with this whole with this whole charade with T Will, man. Huh. <laughs> this would have been if if it was what it was earlier, 
This would have been devastating news. So Manny Diaz hired us a linebacking coach. Good, good job, Manny. Good job. Pack is still your best friend, though, but good job. So we got a we got a ball game here, man. Seventeen to zero at halftime. Wolford never heard of them versus Mercer. I heard of Mercer, but basketball team, not football. Nonetheless, we got some football. You know, ESPN Plus. We got some football in the spring, some college football in the spring, and this will last for the next what month or two. This will last about a good two months. So we got a good two months of football. This will get us to the spring game and a couple weeks after the spring game. So, you know, we're not out here drowning for, for football. And, you know, in the offseason, man, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but, man, I'll be like, God dang, I can't wait for football season to start. Whew. Right. He said Packy had yeah, he did have the strikers playing good. But I don't know about if I would have Packy as a, a linebacking coach, period, like you know, coaching all along. Like like we thought it was for a second ago. But nonetheless, you know, he'll have some help. All right. So got some information here from um, Cole Perry. Um, take a look at any of Texas A&M's um, 2020 recruiting class. And there's, and there's a pretty good bet that this Ishmael guy, his, I don't know how to say his last name, Whatever, I ain't, I ain't gonna try. I ain't gonna try. Um, he had a role in helping um land that player. Um, hold on, had a role of um landing players that are considered elite recruits. He aided the Aggies in pursuit of players like um Darnell Harris as one of the deepest um defensive back class in classes in the country. He also um been a Big asset for Texas A&M defensive back room, working alongside defensive coordinator Mike Elko. Okay. Um, came to College Station from um, Ole Miss when he served as a senior defensive analyst from 2017 to 2019. Before arriving in Oxford, he was at – he was at GA at um, Auburn – the former Purdue Boilermaker is someone we expect to have an on-field role sooner than later. Okay. And he's the, they're basically saying that everybody that's around the Aggies program is very high on this guy. So, all right. So, we might have a solid, a solid hire here. And if anybody knows Cole Perry, then you know, hey, I value this guy's opinion. So if he's okay with it, I'm okay with it. And we shall see. We shall see how it works out nonetheless. Mommy boy, what's going on with you, boss? 
All right, so halftime. Um, it's halftime, so game is at halftime. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll be back in a second.
this is what it takes to wear that U on the side of your helmet. Alrighty. Okay. Um. Okay. So for the other games that's going on, those games are also on at halftime right now. You know, North Dakota, sixteen. Southern Illinois, fourteen. Southern Illinois, fourteen. North Dakota, sixteen. So that's at halftime. And then um also halftime you got Samford, fourteen. East Tennessee. Seven, the East Tennessee State Buccaneers, seven. And then um, this game is almost wrapped up, but Moorhead State is getting blown out. They're getting the bejesus beat out of them. Moorhead State, zero. James Madison, 52. Jeez, what a blowout. Man. Man. That, that 52 kind of brings back memories. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Moorhead State will get some garbage time points and put up by 10. So, as you guys know, we got our linebacking coach, man. We got two linebacking coach. We got Ishmael and we got Packy. Let's see how let's see how they work out in the um in the spring, let's see if they can get, get some of these linebackers developed. And it's a hey, it's a wait and see basis. Wait and evaluate. John Joe Smith, what's going on with you? Be yeah, up out of the party. And, um, unlike basketball, you can't just stick a football game in on a random Wednesday and then play again on Saturday. Let's talk about that Wofford schedule for a little bit. You know, it's, it's different this year, no night games and you know, the Terriers, as you said, Jim, next week scheduled to play at Chattanooga on the 27th and a noon kickoff. And then right back here on March 6th, that'll also be a noon kickoff. And that's a something that with that noon kickoff coinciding with the Southern Conference basketball tournament, you're trying to hope you get lucky and that your team uh, is, is playing the opposite time of your football team. Um, and then Wofford, uh, you know, will go to Sanford. And so it sets up nicely for me for Wofford in that you play eight games. You play four, you get your bye. Then you play another four. And uh, Terriers will come out in the second half with two straight home games before ending the season with two road games at Western Carolina. And at Furman, and that, that last one, it could be for all the marbles. And, uh, you know, conceivably two teams could get in from the Southern Conference, but in a, in a year where only 16 teams are going to make the tournament, the, the playoffs, um, wouldn't it be interesting if you got to, you go to Greenville with not only a Southern Conference championship on the line, but but the automatic berth could be uh, could be something that could, could add a little spice to a to a mid April football game. Here in today's game, Mercer hasn't been able to run the football. Wofford has. We'll give you a look at some of the blocking and Ur Urban Mulligan, of course, taking full advantage. But again, Wofford with all newcomers on the offensive line. A lot of people have pointed to that. It's as far as being a weak link. And they haven't run the ball, I guess, grounded it out in the interior. But once they've gotten these running backs on the edge, it's worked. And then Jimmy Wyrick has stepped up and made some good throws, avoiding some pressure. And again, this is what Josh Conklin has wanted for a couple of years. He wanted a multifaceted offense that if you fall behind, you have a chance to, to, to make, come back, to yeah. throw the ball and come back. You can't really do that when you run the option 90% of the time. 
So that's worked out well. As for Mercer, they have not been able to run the ball well. And, you know, they've got a very young offensive line as well. But, boy, they really, really miss Tyree Devison. You know, an experienced running back went into the transfer portal after playing the fall season. Had 104 yards rushing against these Wofford Terriers last year at Macon. And, uh, they're searching for a few things. And that is going to happen when you have a new head coach. You know, Drew Cronick is an offensive genius. But... He also has to get his type of players in that usually takes two or sometimes three years of a recruiting cycle. A lot of new coaches, and look, maybe this is to be expected a little bit, despite the fact that the Bears were able to play three games in the fall. Yeah, you know, and that's you get a sense of what you can do in the fall, um, and all the FCS teams that play did, and what you have. And, you know, maybe for those coaches, what do we need? You know, what what, what kind of pieces do we need to, to fit in here as we get ready to, to play a spring season um, and then leading into the fall of, uh, of 2021? And, you know, I think that's going to be an interesting thing is how are coaches going to manage things with playing? Uh, you know, everybody has spring practice, but you're going to play eight games this spring. You're going to have guys get banged up, get injured, and then start – trying to prepare for for summer and and then into the fall of 2021 all while trying to win games this year trying to win a championship trying to advance into the playoffs and, and go as far as you can in, in that regard statistically in the first half it was really long <laughs> great balance they, they ran all three <laughs> oh they man she never tells me no <laughs> believe it or not she never tells me no Bears. You take that and then I'll tell her no before she tell me no. Fourth down conversion in there too. Those are big, big plays that all. She's a super freak, super freak, super freak guy. For Mercer, they got to do some things differently in the in the second half. One, they they got to protect their quarterback. Whether it's Carter Peavy, whether or not Chronic decides to go back to Harris and Cross, they've got to protect the quarterback better. And they've got to keep Wofford from being able to just pin, the, pin their ears back and come after. Are <laughs> oh, you run. good, OG? Yeah, absolutely right. If you can't run the ball, you're one-dimensional. And with what you've seen from Michael Mason uh, and Tanner Barnes being able to get after the quarterback, it makes things awful. difficult. Said Pecky will set up another job uh, after next season. He has been an analyst, striker coach, coach, linebacker coach. And then, the, yeah, the yep. I wish him the best of luck. I hope he get the great resume that he needs. And I wish we get somebody in here that come in here and develop these guys better and recruit. points. Trey Hollowell had 11. Messiah Jones had 11. Storm Murphy, 10. Ryan Larson, 8. Sam Godwin, 8. And how about this line for Ryan Larson? 8 points, 6 assists, excuse me, 6 rebounds. Chris Smith say roll tide. That's, uh, that's okay. Right there Keep that same energy. <laughs> no, I ain't even going to start that mess. <laughs> They ain't even to start that mess, man. Right now, in my heart, that game, Miami versus um, Alabama, that's a 50-50. <laughs> Mercer and basketball today. <laughs> it's interesting. Mercer, the basketball team, was, uh, I think, a very uh, very sexy pick to, to, to be up at the top three or four of the Southern Conference. And got off to a tough start, starting to play a lot. See, my issue with our coaches, maybe one of those teams, they won't be here long enough. We we do be getting we right now we got C Rob. That's a good coach. He probably won't be here more than two years. Three years if we're lucky. Reed Lashley, you know, he probably won't be here too long either. So the the problem is not even getting coaches; it's keeping them. T Rob break records. There is Miller returning out over the 30. Yeah, 31 yard line. Good field position to start. Um, Y'all yeah, see this, though. Chris Smith says there will, close. Close. there will be nothing close. There won't be nothing close. Miami versus Bama. So, he's, so Chris is coming up in here talking about roll tide, and he's saying that Miami is going to blow out Alabama. Y'all heard it here first. Again, Carter Beebe, he has played all but the opening series for the Bears. He <laughs> said, don't pull fast for me. <laughs> oh, man. Shotgun. And 
Chris, I thought you was a Bama fan, man. How you going to come in here and talk about Miami going to blow out Alabama? Y'all hear that? That's something I normally would say, but that, that Chris coming in here saying it, saying that Miami is going to be going to blow out Florida. Uh, I'm guessing you saying um, Alabama's going to get massacred. I'm guessing that I don't know what the, what the G what the G come from, but I'm guessing that's what you're trying to say that um, Alabama's going to get massacred. Dang, bro, I don't even have that much confidence. But okay, I, if you say it, then I believe you. Miami will massacre. Um, Alabama. This is Chris. Chris saying that, and he's an Alabama fan. For the first down, what they were trying to accomplish there, but Tanner Barnes on the bottom of that pile for Wofford. And they and they say I'm delusional. <laughs> but you got Alabama fans come up in here telling me that we're gonna beat the brakes off of them. I'm I'm saying Miami is getting better by the day, and they're gonna beat Alabama. That's what you're trying to tell me, Chris, because that's what it looks like on my screen. I'm saying Miami is getting better, and they're gonna beat Alabama. Okay, I got you, Chris. I'm gonna put that down. I'm gonna write that down on February 20th. Chris Smith, Alabama fan, says Miami's going to beat Alabama. Got you. Written down. Man, that's tough. Big big game there for Petey. First, we're trying to get something rolling here after being shut out in the first half by the Whopper defense. First and 10 for the Whopper 41. This time, the handoff goes inside and breaking it up for a good gainer is Brandon Marshall. Q Street tackled there for Wofford, but not before Marshall broke off five. Yeah, Kagan Campbell, corner reserve, made the uh, tackle for the Terriers. Now to the Wofford 37, it'll be second and five. Campbell's a transfer from Jacksonville State that sat out 2019. Had to go all the way back. Clark now is back in the backfield. He's the man behind PB, though. Shoot it out quick, and that's Dero. Darrow breaks a tackle, gets down the sideline, and another first down for the Bears. Ethan Darrow gets all the way down to the 25-yard line, a 12-yard gain, and they move the sticks again. Key in this, watch out here. 82, Andrew May with a great block. Put Campbell on the ground, and that allowed Darrow to turn the corner. Herder Peavy marching the Bears down the field, looking a lot more poison. He's had time to throw, plus they're, they're running some quick hitters, too, not letting the Wofford pass rush. Get to the Mercer quarterback. Not those deep drop backs that we saw in the first half. It's Drew Connick and the staff appear to have made the adjustment there. And in motion is Dero. Give us to Clark. He's got room up the middle. Breaks a tackle inside the 10, inside the 5, and all the way down to the 3 yard <laughs> line. And just like that, oh, do you think they're going to beat us? Is in the red zone, inside goal to go. It was almost like they heard us talking at halftime that they had to come out and establish the run. They've done that this half, and they've done it with Clark running behind an offensive line that's playing better here on this opening drive of the second half. Now, Mark Clark down at the four, so it's 21 yard scamper. First and goal to go, Bears. They try to get on the board for the first time today. Wildcat formation. Wildcat formation, DeAndre Johnson. <laughs> Hurdles into the end zone, and he is in for the score in person. It sucks we don't have our own A.J. Brown in Miami. Shifted PV out to a wide out position. Yeah. And, uh, definitely Johnson using takes AJ it Brown. snap, follows his uh, lead block there, and gets into the end zone. Impressive drive by Mercer to start this second half. We've got, got a, a ball game. Got a nice block on the edge by left tackle John Thomas. All right, so Mercer decide that they don't want to be shut out. They don't want to go out. With that zero, so they just put up six points on the field. Field and goal is, is good. True. And Mercer has so Mercer down, field, down by ten. Kickoff and made this one a ball game. Eleven twelve to go here in the third quarter. Mercer has broken through, but Wofford still leads it, seventeen to seven. 
Sure. You can tell them how fun college is. Concerts on the quad, early morning tailgates, your bearded professor with the suede elbow patches. Or you can give someone different answers. Alrighty. Nine and three. Okay, I can see the loss to um I can see the loss to Alabama, maybe North Carolina. But who who that third team would be? I mean, nine and three sounds re sound reasonable, sound realistic too. I'm thinking more ten and two, but I mean, nonetheless, I'm guessing that you got Alabama and um North Carolina as well. Who would you say the third one be though? Who who you got a strong feeling we might have a a slip up against or mental breakdown? <laughs> All right, y'all would eat doing commercials. Say my fandom 10 and 2. Yeah, that's what I'm saying too. I'm going 10 and 2. If we lose to um if we lose to Alabama and um North Carolina. My I hope we don't lose in North Carolina because that's that game probably will determine who goes to the ACC championship. Unless, you know, one of our teams, either us or them, slip up and lose to another ACC team along the way. So that game could possibly be the deciding factor for the Coastal. I think Clemson will win the, um, the Atlantic outright. So, but like I said, 9-3, and three, who you, who you think other than that, um, other than Alabama and um, North Carolina, who you think we could probably slip up and lose to? Uh, made in day, so I'm taking it one game at a time. Yeah, I haven't even made a season. Um, normally I'll do one of them way too early season. Um, you know, schedule predictions, whatever. I haven't really made no video. I just been state making the statement in my videos that you know, ten and two. If we beat Alabama, though, I don't know. I don't know after that. After that, I hope um, you know being Atlanta, being um, Alabama wouldn't set the stage so high to where they play down the competition to everybody else. I know one thing though: we ain't losing the FSU. <laughs> we are not losing to them. I don't care what the Seminoles say. <laughs> We is not losing to FS Pooh. We lose to FS Pooh. Man, that'll be that'll be that'll be tough. We got to make it five in a row. Hey, ESPN, what's wrong with y'all? Why y'all ain't playing no sound? Stop playing with me. Let me refresh this real quick. Maybe the... I'm trying to... <sighs> so they killed the sound. I don't know why they killed the sound. That's ESPN for you. Having technical difficulties. Yeah, Pitt is one of those teams you got to look out for. They always upset somebody, especially when they ranked in the top five, top ten. 
they all they are always known for taking somebody down, especially them weeks before it's like championship time and stuff like that. They always ruin somebody's season. Out to the right. That's going to be Chip Welsh with the catch. All right, so ESPN got it back together, so we got some volume again. And has been a part of this program for a long time. Yeah, Walcott, who has done a tremendous job in his four years here. And if you've ever been to Woodbury Forest, you know that it is one of the most picturesque places in, on the East Coast. A beautiful place. And, uh, Tell you what, Jim has become a, quite a football player here for the Terriers. They'll give him five on there, moved it back a yard after the original spot, so it's second and five whopper, Mercer 42. Byron. This time he'll hand it off right up the middle and picking his way through the defense. That's Irwin Mulligan again. Irwin Mulligan, first down for the Terriers. He's all the way down to the Mercer 31. The red shirt freshman out of Buford had a great first half. Great vision, good uh, jump cut there. Mulligan is starting to rack up some yardage. Maybe said he's from Buford, played at Whale Branch High School, where Nick Pringle, the Terrier freshman on the basketball team, also played. Yeah. Jaheim Hazel, Wofford defensive yeah. back. They've got quite the recruiting connection at that school down in, in the low country. First 10 Terriers. All on the 32 of Mercer. Actually, ball for 31. This time, Wyrick, straight handoff, and that's Mulligan again. Not as much running room that time. Boy, the Mercer safeties really, really come up quickly. That was Damage once again, who, you know, he, he listed it as a linebacker. Um, you know, probably the, the lightest linebacker, pure linebacker in the SOCOM, and he comes up and he hits. Well, that's just what you said. Right now, teams want athleticism and speed on the field, and you're willing to give up 20 pounds at linebacker if you've got a guy that can run. Eight of two. Mm. Second and eight now. Whopper, 28. Right side, turn of the corner. Mulligan has a step. He's got another first down inside the red zone, inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. Got a great block out there. I think it might have been Garrison Moore, the tight end. But Mulligan just All great right, vision. Wolford looked like he's they about to be back in, back in business in the red zone. Maybe put up some more points, try to put this game away. But it's still early in the third quarter, so it's a, um, Mercer still have plenty of time to get it together. First and 10 from the 12-yard line, y'all. Great handoff to Walker. Nathan Walker almost to the pylon, and he steps out of bounds just around the two, maybe the three-yard line. Got 10 yards, and that's going to be very close to a first down, too. Yeah, it is going to be a first down, and Walker's going fast here. They're playing some tempo. Walker bouncing outside. He is a big, strong runner, tough to bring down, and tried to stretch out for the pylon, and had already stepped out of bounds. Big hitter, it's Walker again, and this time he's into the end zone for the Terrier touchdown. Yeah, All same right, so that they just ran the, the previous play score it again. That time, run it again, and Walker finds the end zone. Terriers with their third rushing touchdown of the day. And his career touchdown number six for the junior out of Ridgeville, South Carolina. And Wofford trying to make it a 24-7 to lead as Dawson Ennis tries the extra. Snapper, that pull kick, everything perfect. And Wofford responds to the Mercer touchdown with a long drop of their own. Taking it in the length of the field, Nathan Walker caps it off. And the Terriers have themselves a 24-7 to lead. And farmers, we know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Like how nice it is to switch and save on your auto policy. But it... I bet y'all do. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. <laughs> So
So we got to... And this Ishmael guy, man, he's pretty young, too. Man, y'all hear this crap? Florida State at it again. Florida State is at it again. Them Seminoles don't quit. Now you good, Jordan. Thanks for the info. Thanks for the heads up. So apparently Florida State has raised a hundred million dollars. $100 million. I guess they're trying to get some new facilities and all that good stuff, you know, trying to up, upgrade their their campus, their, you know, all the facilities that they got, their program facilities, athletic program facilities, whatever, trying to get, I guess, make it look more enticing for recruits and stuff like that. So, hey, congratulate the Florida State. Hundred million dollars. They raised a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars. According to Knowles Game Day, a hundred million dollars. FSU announced that the university has reached its goal of a hundred million dollars in pledge towards the unconquered campaign. So they trying to make it, they trying to make it better up there. They trying to get some recruits in there. They trying to compete. You know, when you go to campuses like Clemson and all those other guys that has these big old facilities and all kind of crap that entices these recruits when they come through, well, the state is trying to be a part of that. It might, it might work. It might work, you know. They ain't winning no games. They might have well went over some recruits with some – some fancy looking, you know, <laughs> facilities. <laughs> oh, man. Florida State making moves. Good for them. Good for them. I guess we better beat we better beat on them until they make their new facilities. I guess we just got to keep beating on them. Oh man, okay. Maybe rolls out to the right. He's going to keep it and try to pull his way forward, but he will be stopped short of the first down. 
Joe Beckett made sure he would not get to the marker, and we may be in four-down territory here for the Bears. Yeah, you, you are, I think. He's about... You said thank Jimbo Fisher for that, Seminole fans. <laughs> and now it's only four minutes to go in the third quarter, and it's 24-7, to seven, but you get the sense from Mercer that they can't afford to simply match scores with Whopper. they got to go out there and, and keep forging ahead and try to get some stops on defense. And yeah, field goal is all over here. Yeah, we're kicking field goal. It doesn't do you a whole heck of a lot of good. I was going to say field goal is doing no good right now. I don't think I, I like this call going for more than three. We've got a whistle and a timeout will be taken by the Whopper Terriers. We'll keep it right here. Is the Terriers? <laughs> He's a better use that money to pay off Philly Tiger. <laughs> I think they didn't they already pay off Willie. Right they would have kept Willie. Really. They probably would have been doing something this 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 time around. I think Coach Conklin and Coach Green understand how big of a play this is uh, coming up here, and you want to make sure you're dialed in completely, and you have everybody uh, doing what they're supposed to do here. Reading assignments. <laughs> Just throw it in the bag. Well. You know, that's Willie's. That's Willie theme song for Florida State. The the the, the, Just throw it in the bag. Someone's going to grab a lot of momentum here. Uh, you know, and if you're Wofford, Mercer really hadn't stopped you a whole lot here, and I think that's why Mercer has to go for it here. Right. And, and I don't, I don't so, know that um, the other games that's being that was played, um, James Madison beat Moorhead State 52 to 0. Um, the Samford East Tennessee State game that's tied at 14. Southern Illinois 14, North Dakota 23. Interesting play call for me. Well, it's a deep handoff, so now instead of gaining three, you've got to gain seven. Well, and, and not only that, but the guy who's been punishing you on deep handoffs is Clark, not Marshall. Uh, but that's why we're up here and they're down there. It'll be Wofford football first and ten from their own 25. They take over with 334 to go in quarter number three. And now the Terriers have a 24-7 lead and the football. And do they smell a little blood in the water here now, too? You take a chance and go up top. We shall see. I'm going to hand it off on first down, and why not right up the middle? And a big, big gainer. Ryan Ingram gets his first carry of the game, and he should retire right now. How about that per carry average? A gain of 22. 5'11", 200-pound freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, played at Stevenson High School, and so what do we know? Throw it up top. It's just a pullback dive up the middle and goes for 20. Let's hand it to a guy that hasn't touched the ball all game long and worked out just fine. First down. This time they fake it to the line and a throw over the middle. He's got that cleave, but just a little bit out of his reach. And maybe that's that wins. the play you were thinking yeah, That's about. what I thought was coming to play before. You know, you go back to that run play by Ingram, fresh legs. Uh, that says a lot here as you get into the late third quarter. That pass was just a tick overthrown. I think the win might have made it even more than a, just a half a tick overthrown. But Van Cleve had gotten the separation. And uh, if it's if it's, if you throw it up a little more air under it, let him run under it, uh, it's, it's six. You know, Walker could roll five experienced running backs out there, and we just saw a sixth Ingram carry the football for 22. They can really wear a defense down. Second down, Wyrick back to pass again. Throws, and that's going to be on a hop, a little bit short. That one was intended for Alec Holt. He's a true freshman out of Lexington, South Carolina. Myrick, I don't think really stepped into this one as well as he wanted to. He, he kind of had happy feet back there in the pocket for some reason and uh, needed to get that going a little bit better. Um, step into it and, and rip it over there. It's third and 10 Terrier still from the 46-yard line. Oh, man. Now we'll hand this one off. Exploring the right side, but not going to get anywhere near the first down marker is Lovelace. And Mercer will come up. 
I believe, with a stop, depending on what Wofford decides to do here on fourth down from midfield. And this, again, well, I believe got to Parker out there. Yeah, this, this one, anything. this and game might be in the bag. I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch to another game. Switch to a more, much closer game. Because with Landon Parker back there, he, he's an athlete. Uh, he is, you said he's had a long t- catch today on a, on a pass play. He, he can run it. Samford East, Tennessee happens. State. I'm going to switch to that game. Other teams to think about, worry about. You put something on, on tape and the whole conference has to worry about it. Just like they just did just there. Different look up under center. That's Beckley. <laughs> Beckley carries the ball. I don't know. And I think they were just trying to get Mercer to jump after all that. Didn't work. The Bears held their water. And Harvard's got to burn their second time out of the half. I took the de- – Oh, did they take the, the delay, delay game? Yeah. Okay. That five yards really in the grand scheme of things, especially when you're kicking with the wind, doesn't matter. But, you know, yeah, you, you just showed something that people have to wonder about. You know, you send Black and Beckley running up behind the long snapper, looking like he's going to take it. And you got Parker back there, and he – I don't know if Beckley can throw it or not, but if he can, he's got a capable re- All right, so we'll switch over to the Samford and East. Tennessee State game. That, this game is a lot closer, a three-point game. I think Mercer just lost that game to um to Wolford. I don't think they could come back. Like I said, these are F S F C S games. So, you know, not that exciting, but at the same time, nonetheless, something to watch during the spring. Now, as of right now, this game is uh, is on a commercial break. So, once it gets out of commercial break, I will, you know, bring the volume back, bring the sound back. Say so so that we can't run block. We need to go to um, Wisconsin and recruit. Yeah, we need we need some some old line, some guys that take pride in blocking, some guys that take, you know, that's willing to take that. Uh, We need some, yeah, like I said, we need some guys that take blocking as something pride, like, you know, not allowing anybody in the backfield feels like a touchdown to them. Them the kind kind of guys we need. We go the whole game without letting, you know, letting anybody get by you or disrupt your quarterback, you know, that's like a touchdown to them. It says Miami problem on the old line is size. Yeah. Yeah. We have been pretty small on that old line. Nonetheless, we had a better old line. I tell you what, our offense probably could be, I don't know, maybe top 10. If our wide receivers can catch, you know. You got guys like you know Sailors and um, you know Quay Holmes who can have to have the vision, have the ability to bounce it outside if they need to, and they have the speed and power to kind of you know get you positive yards. You know Tyler Rydell, he has weapons around him. It's all about managing it and, and making sure he's uh, protecting the football. Sailors was best right. out of their backfield at nearly six yards per carry a season ago, but that time All right, they tried so second on seven, try to throw a screen pass. Um, receiver could, see a lot of those type of throws and could not catch it. It was overthrown two. by the wide, by the quarterback. And that's one thing we talked to Coach Sanders about was, you know, 
who's going to be that guy that's going to help take the top off of a defense, that's going to help stretch, uh, you know, your your offense to kind of give you those big play. But I do too for these set, games we're next still week. Because they do, you know, they they're doing it on a weekly basis. So these games next week, what I'll do, I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys vote in my community section on which games we watch, which game we broadcast. Because most of these games come on at the same exact time. So you know, if you guys have any ideas on these teams, you know, y'all seen them or heard of them or anything, and y'all would like to watch them over another game, then you know, I'll let you guys make that decision which game we watch. But I'll only post the ones that will be played on ESPN Plus. Those are the ones that I could actually pull up and broadcast without no problem. Get points on the board. Bounce. Back to work goes Sanford inside its own 30s. They were able to get their first points for the opening quarter on the last drive. Chris Oladokin, their quarterback who came to them from South Florida. I thought he was one of the really bright transfers in the SOCON in 2019. Good looking player. He too out of Tampa. So a city that's had a metro area, Tampa, St. Pete, Tampa Bay area, that's had quite a year on the pro sports front yeah. with the champions or the runners up for champions in pro sports. Well, both starting quarterbacks in the game today All for right. Tampa. The Lince again. The defense, covering AJ Tony. The defense Tony. by East Tennessee State. QB for Sanford. Not down pass by number four. Yeah, Florida obviously produces some great um, athletes across the board, but uh, you know it's good to see these guys in, in the Southern Conference, and you know, they do the great character guys as well. They, they do the right things on and off the football field on these programs, and you know that's the kind of kind of player that the Southern Conference left to try. So, Stanton has done most of the work. For the running backs so far, the few times they've handed off in this game for Sanford. Giles was listed as a starter, but Stanton was a workhorse a season ago with 122 carries for 690 yards, but a third and 10. Scrambling Ola Dokin and Pinkleton gets him down again. Hey, this defense has done a great job so far. They made some adjustments at halftime, you know, after the first quarter where they kind of able to settle down. They've done a great job as far as building confidence and getting to, to Chris and collapsing that pocket, not allowing him to really, you know, kind of slither his way through uh, to get to that next level. Great job by this ETSU defense and now getting the ball back and hopefully building oh, and, you know, they can, you know, produce points on their offensive side. Salado, over 40 yards per punt in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> you say D. Wiggins, Mark Pope, <laughs> McLeod should play for Mercer. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dang. You didn't say somewhere like an Appalachian State or something. You said Mercer. Took that into the second quarter. Sailed a little bit on Husband. It's a lot harder than you think. I, I remember when I, when I played at Walford, um, you know, we would have to have fun, kick off practice, things like that. And I would always try to go back there and return on it. Nobody ain't going to be scared of Florida State this season. Right now, pressure coming. The week after that, then they'll probably be. Um, Somebody to look out for. Huzzy, I don't know if he actually made the grab. He did. It looked like the ball was well short. Kutrell player on the coverage. I can't believe that Huzzy made the grab. We were completely shielded. Well, he made the grab, but again, the ball was the ball was the ball was underthrown, and whenever you have an underthrown ball, it forces your guy to kind of get tangled up with the receiver. And the referee's going to throw that play. It's actually kind of a smart play if you think about it. But you have to make sure it, you know a lot of things go your way. But again, that's the first real big play that we've seen down the field. Now I would I would expect them to run the football here because that's what they do. 
when they get to this part of the field. All right, so they yeah, running they, the ball. Got nice some um, nice blocks on the outside. Nice turn. That was a picked up about maybe 13, 14 yards. Pass interference penalty was declined because, unlike the NFL, in that case, you're going to do much better by taking the yards off the play. Here's Holmes on that last carry off the fence. And great blocking by the guys on the outside, allowing him to be able to get, uh, you know, understand, see his, his blockers want to you know, get set up and then do what he does best, you know, accelerate through the hole and get, you know, positive yards on first down. 10 yards that time is 81 on 12 carries. Clay Holmes, 95 yards on 15 tries in the last meeting between these two teams as a timeout has been called. So 3-11 to go in the third quarter. We have a timeout on the call on the field because of injured Sanford player. Those injuries hurt even worse. In some places, they tax flatulence, the kind that comes from cows. If you're one hundred, it's, it's, I was not a fan of the cold weather. You know, this, this is not I hated practicing in it, I hated playing in it. <laughs> Chris Edmonds, the sophomore safety, looks like he's okay. He was shaken up on that last play. Yeah. But again, I think the game plan is real simple for ETSU here to finish up this game. Keep giving the football to your playmakers in the backfield and that offensive line to continue to try to, you know, create openings so you know, their, their, their playmakers can get, you know, five, six yards of time. That's 238 yards of total offense, 27 by air, 111 on the ground. Rydell, nothing doing. Good job that time. Tay Berry, the junior out of Florida, Mississippi. Say, <laughs> FSU knows don't have either talent nor the discipline. Y'all will be. Y'all will have another losing season next year. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Three and nine this season. Now you're a second and 14. Oh, and you're to play with your football. There's only limited routes and limited passes that you can really call here. Nice right, sacks today for Sanford's defense. That was not a strength last year. Wilson in the flat. And we have third down. Say <laughs> Wilson. This is the final six games last season due to injury. That included not facing the Sanford. Wilson, five catches to lead the Bucks receiving for so far today. Well, definitely a passing down here, third and eight, third and nine. <laughs> it's in Jackson. Jacksonville State will beat. <laughs> nine on third down. Quick handoff. Holmes gets the first down and gets inside the 10. Well, I was definitely wrong on that one. They ran the football against everyone else's judgment. I thought they were definitely throwing the football, but I think they had enough. UND to game. Where, where it's at. Great first down. And again, this UND is game. the entire time, especially this part of the field. Continue to give it to Quay Holmes. Continue to give it to their running backs that make plays. And trusting in your offensive line is going to create openings. Um, for you to be able to manufacture those kind of those kind of plays. 14 yards on that carry. He's matched his output last time these two teams got together. 13 touches, 95 yards. High formation this time. And Holmes ran from behind and eventually dropped to the ground. Good job surging in by Joshua Long. Yeah, and again, this Sanford defense. Oh, the North, Car uh, North Dakota game. game. Last year, we giving them almost, almost over 30 points a game. Um, but you can tell they've definitely improved in this offseason, and they're you know, getting better and better uh, as the game goes on. The Bucks have outrushed the Bulldogs 123 to 74. Second down and goal. That game not even close, though, bro. And so, too high. That's South, um, Southern Illinois and North Dakota game. It's not even close. That game is is a runaway. Trying to stop the run, and 
at least with this one right here, it's a lot close. So, you know, either team could win. It, it, it's a game right here. Zeb Petty, the backup tight end, the intended target. Third down and goal from the seven. This is a big play, Pete. This is one of those plays that Coach Sanders I, I was hoping that Jacksonville, that Jackson State, I'm sorry. I was hoping that Jackson State played today. That would have been a game to watch. ETSU elects to take the timeout as the clock was frozen with 10 seconds to go, so it's not as if they could just let it run out. Started to do in the fourth quarter. I mean, this is a big play. I mean, again, you know, when we talked to Coach Sanders on the phone, um, one thing he talked about was there's a handful of plays in every game that, that really change how it turns out. And we have to make sure that we maximize our potential. Uh, and I think calling the timeout here, he understands that this third and seven uh, in this part of the field is crucial because settling for just a field goal and not taking the lead, when you have a team like Sanford that is so dynamic on offense, um, this is at one of those moments. So how can we score a touchdown, build some momentum, give our guys on defense some uh, confidence that, hey, you know, if you stop them, we're going to put points on the points on the board as your offense. So, and I think play. Sanford's defense could say the same thing because they went through a 2019 where they didn't get a big stop here or there, and it would have made the difference in their five and seven seasons. Exactly. So this is this is a critical play for both teams at this moment. Third and goal might be our final play of quarter number three. See where the pressure's coming. Make adjustments. Rydell thought about running it. Nothing doing. Cheeks was the first yeah, one to OG, get the um, OG Cole Perry hit me up. He had sent me some information on him, man. Yeah, he's definitely an elite Sanford recruiter. Yeah, that, that just, you know that you're, you're, you have a, they're bringing pressure right at the middle. I mean, you, you see that pre-snap, and you don't get out of your –
Alrighty. Oh man, so I'm gonna have to get a technician out here on um Monday. Come take a look at my air conditioner. Kind of scared the crap out of me this morning because I I started like smelling some some burning smell. So I'm looking from I'm looking around the whole house. I don't see nothing. Basketball here in Johnson City. The cheerleaders bring the spirit. So then I, um, I start the smelling the vents, and I'm like, okay, so it's, it's blowing out the vents. So something burned out in the AC. So you got to get technician to come out here and look at it. We're out tailgating. You can just tell the energy was back on campus. College football had returned. Thank in God it's not summertime yet. Montreal, Washington, and Stanford. His teammate Ty King had that big run back moments ago on a kickoff return, trying to get off on the right foot and steal one on the road here today. All right, so you got a good game here, man. Good game. Uh, fourth quarter. Whoever win this quarter, win the game. That same kind of mentality uh, here in the fourth quarter, because again, when when they block and they hold up uh, for Chris, you know. <laughs> our second tie of half number two. Special about the kickoff return that time compared to what he had done previously for King. And back to work with Oladokun and the Sanford Bulldogs on offense. Yeah, again, you know, a lot of good athletes on this on this uh, Sanford offense. And, and the key is for Chris Oladokun to really just get the ball to these guys in space, allow them to make plays. Um, you know, a lot of quick screens, a lot of you know, kind of, uh, you know, quick out routes, you know, big, and again, they hurry up to the ball and kind of keep things going where it kind of right. puts the defense on their heels. So good, uh, maybe they, six yard pickup, five yard pickup right on now, first down. I'm not really worried or stressed out. Just run your offense, do what you do. You've got plenty of time and you've got the weapons around you to, to uh, get what you need at the end of the day. Torrance Pollard's fourth catch of the game gets seven yards. Double play. This could be a throw, and it goes back to Ola Dokin. See if he can find a crease as he got it back from his receiver, Chandler Smith. A little razzle-dazzle there, Pete. You know, we haven't seen anything like that all day. Uh, you know, Coach Hacker's been kind of holding that one in his back pocket. Um, and why not use it right now? I mean, great job. Everyone's running, you know, full speed to the – to the initial screen uh, screen pass, and they throw it back to Chris Oladoka to be able to get you a first down. The shadows come over the field, and actually that time to King. Chris Hatcher noted that it would be a game time decision as to who would start a quarterback between Oladoka and Liam Welch, and he said whoever starts the game may not necessarily be the starter moving forward, but I think Oladoka's making a case off the pump fake and. Connecting that time to Smith, it looks like he was going to make All a right, whole so we got lot a first more down. of that. But a great job recovering by Mike Price, the Appalachian State transfer, the safety for the Bucks. Well, I think Chris does a, a good job of giving me the complete quarterback. He got a He's first and ten. Make every at around to, uh, you know, run and get away from trouble if he needs to, and he's able to keep his eyes downfield. And we, we've seen him, you know. For the most part, he's been really smart around the fifth, uh, the forty-eight yard line, line, second and maybe. Exactly Second and maybe seven. So I, I, I think it was well, oak in time. And all right, so first down. down. And again, you see him. You see his head moving. He's going through all of his progressions. He's able to see the entire field and then make On the second right and throw. five. They picked um, up five so yards. That's a good sign of your QB one. That's what you want. Someone that can go through all their progressions and make the right throw and keep the keep the offense moving in the right direction. First catch of the game for Big Jairus Kramer. Pressure coming, and Oladokun is sacked. That time it was Donovan Manuel on the linebacker blitz. 
it was kind of the announcer's jinx. As soon as you give a guy a compliment, you know, something happens like this. You know, great pressure off the off the um, you know the outside here, and he's got to he's got to see that, feel that, and get the ball out quick. Whether it's throw it to his check down receiver or or just throw the ball to the boundary, get in, uh, but not take a sack. Now you're you're second and twenty one, and you're kind of getting off schedule. All right, so we got a close game here. Like I said, 17 17. This game, Stanton underneath, knocked down near midfield. Pinkleton was right there. All right. Get tied up. So, East Tennessee defense is trying to hold out against oh, um, Sanford. We got a third and 16. Long. That was a big loss of yards, nine yards lost on that previous play. So, Sanford. let's see if um, let's see if Stanford. Down can get 16. something out of this third and 16. Eight of 15 today on third uh, down tries. They're on the 49 yard line. Quarterback Old being chased. He bounces out to the outside. Pass is deflected. So you'll have a fourth and 16. Samford will punt the ball. likely a passing down, so the defensive line is able to kind of pin their ears back and just get after the quarterback. And as you see here, just great pursuit, great angle, getting their hands up. I might not be able to make the sack, but I can get my hands up and knock the ball down and get the ball back to your offense. And again, this is the momentum that's been creeping more and more to this ETSU sideline. How can they finish it off now? When they get the football back, can they put a drive together and take the lead? Zach West, reserve defensive back, doing a good job in the flat that time and able to knock it down. Not related to the tight end on the ETSU team, Noah West or Salado. Huzzy, the fair catch oh. called for. I think we're going to see a flag as Nathan East submarined, and the Bucks should keep possession, actually. They yeah, that was terrible. Had it either way. So ETSU getting ready to go back on offense. Under 12 minutes All to right, go. So quarter East Tennessee State. An opener for both teams. The start of we'll the take over on offense. In 2021, and that was pretty obvious right there. He knew he, was, he, knew he shouldn't be in that position. He was like, let me just fall to the ground. <laughs> was wanted to dig a hole out of the embarrassment of it all. Well, Pete, you got My man, boy, we already replaced T-Will. Ishmael. Ishmael Aristode or Aristide. That's his name. That's that's um that's T Will's replacement. He will be the outside linebacking coach. Most likely Packy will be the striker and inside linebacker coach. That makes you want to celebrate with some fireworks. His name, his name is in the chat for you, boss. But that, that is who will we re, be replacing? Um, T will. He's, he just came from Texas A&M. Introducing Yep. 
Say, is he a is he a good recruiter? He's an elite, elite recruiter. He's from our he's from the Orlando area. Let's just say his um he's from the Orlando area. His dad is the principal at Northwestern High School. He did play um defensive back at Purdue. And he's originally from Miami, so you know that that gives you a little background on him. And he's been he's been recruiting South Florida for Texas A&M in the in the past recent years or whatever. So he definitely is an elite recruiter. All right, so you want to take a big chunk of time off of this clock because you, you don't want this high power Sanford offense to get an um, opportunity to go down the field and put points on the board after you score. We're watching the aspects right here as there's a Sanford player down, but the, the two aspects of the teams that need to improve in this 2021 season. We'll talk about that when we come back. We'll take a time out. Here in Johnson City. All right, so they'll take a time out, play their commercials, so I'll mute them. So Manny acted swift. We got a linebacking coach. So, you know, it would be good to um, get him to come on in. Get him to come on in, get situated with the players, and let's get straight to work, man. He said, what everybody eating on? What's everybody eating on? Right now, I'm eating a big chunk of air. All right. So this game here might come down to it. Maybe the next the next um, team to score on the next possession. It could be ball game. Unless the other can answer. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so we're back in action. Ahead, but uh, just a, a tough hit across the middle. And this follows the injury that we saw before we went to break in which Tremarcus Cheeks, the starting middle linebacker, um, my Sanford boy, according to, to um, today had to be helped off the field. We're told they took him into the According center. to James Blake. I'm at James Baker or whatever. You know, 25, 30 degrees outside. 
those kind of hits. Manny gonna have to take care of the mom. The mom, or the responsibility of DC because basically they don't want to hire nobody. Standout offensive lineman and now Harry, you see number fifteen, not only up to his feet but jogging off under his own strength. So we should likely see him. Basically, he's trying to do what Mark Ricks did, where he um. He's the head coach, and he called. You know how Mark Ricks called the offensive plays. Well, that's what Manny's going to do. He's going to be head coach and call the defensive plays. But I totally agree with you. We should definitely hire DC, but they want to play it cheap. Manny defense did pretty well at Miami, so let's see how that turned out. Let's see how that worked. But I do agree that we should hire a defensive coordinator. The various foods you mentioned at different angles around the region in the month of January. ETSU getting fancy, but Huzzy unable to get away from the pursuit. And Nelson Jordan continues to have himself a day for this Sanford defense. I, I just don't like that, that play call, Pete. I think you have to, you know, run it straight down the throat of Sanford. You know, all this kind of razzle-dazzle, trying to get cute with it. Look, you're in a, you're in a tied ball game with a, a freshman quarterback. You know, you don't have that huge dynamic player, but what you do have, you have two really good running backs and an offensive line that can come off the ball and move people. That should be your game plan. That should be what, you should, what you're doing here late in the fourth quarter when you're trying to get the lead um, and, and, and get off the, you know, get the season off to a good start. Six-yard loss. Jordan, five stops today, and he also has three sacks, and that time, Huzzy taken down. Yeah, just – just not a great few plays of, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's. Let me tell y'all one thing though. Plays, but I really don't like that uh, that possession for ETSU. All the enthusiasm and all the extra um, happiness that I had when we got T. Will. I'm glad we got this Ishmael guy, but I am not doing all that this time around. I will not be made a fool of. But again. T. Will came in here and don't, don't swept the whole fan base off their feet. Garrett Taylor and Washington. And then moved on. So dangerous play. I ain't, going, I ain't doing that again. Manuel and crew were there to make sure he went nowhere. Montreal Washington explosive, but boy, a punt that he fielded just above the ground. But Sanford will get the ball back. Good job by Washington. Hang on with the opposition close by. Back after this, 17 all our Packy taking go. over the um, inside linebackers and the strikers. The President's Day sales event is at Greenway Kia of West Palm Beach. Get 0% APR for 60 months. So Packy will be Kia, dealing with the striker yes. position and the um, inside linebackers. So it's more of a, you know, coach. You coach these, I coach those kind of thing where I know we would rather have just one linebacking coach. But nonetheless, we got to deal with Packy still. <laughs> That's my turtle. Frog protection. Discover something bright. Nah, a lot of people say he done he done pretty great with um with the striker position, so they're not too worried about that. But you know, if it was me, I'd just hire one linebacking coach. Actually, it's for both new and existing. Don't need no need two different people teaching them two different things. <laughs> but I do want the fastest five G network. Oh, I want the fastest five G network. Are we actually hearing this? Like Man, these streams gonna be tough, but I'm gonna still do them regardless. Every weekend, I guess I'm just gonna pick one of these games and just you know run the stream for them. Like I said, man, I'm glad we got some sort of football. Some sort of football, man. Right now, we didn't have this. We didn't have these games on. I'll probably be playing Call of Duty.
Okay. Spring game should be some sometime in April. They haven't announced it yet, but normally it's somewhere from around the 10th to the 17th ish, somewhere in there. But they have not announced the the spring game as of yet. Uh, T2, I was good. Happy to see you supporting the FCS teams. I played my college football at East. Okay, so you played. They well, they playing right now. Um, East Tennessee, um, ninety eight to two thousand. I remember Miami beat us in ninety six. Like we stole something. <laughs> I mean, a lot of these teams, man. Don't get me wrong. A lot of FCS teams, they take a lot of beatings. You know. They 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 t they take the the cupcake spots basically you know, but nonetheless, hey man, it's still a great opportunity to play ball, great great place to go to get an education nonetheless. But hey, you know, take East Tennessee. Right now they they tied, they still got a chance to win this game so. To go either way, they are playing with a freshman quarterback too, from what I've been hearing and um from the game so far. You know, plus right now we don't have no football, so to have these games being played in the spring, you know, off the field, Stanton oh. will keep instead of pitch. Good choice. Has All the right. first down. Nice chunk play right there. All right, and so again, Samford is moving the ball. Looking like a first and uh, first and ten at their own forty-two yard line. We got eight and a half minutes left to play in this game. First and ten. Sixteen yards for Stanton. Nine carries and forty-six on the ground. He has one of the two touchdowns for the Sanford team. A seventeen all game with Jared Singleton, Pete Kennedy with you. Good one here in Johnson City. All right, the quarterbacks in the pocket holding it too long. Had to get rid of it. So y'all have a second and ten. Hard hit by Tyree Robinson on Chandler Smith of Sanford, and the picture says a thousand. Outgained the Bucks 277 to 255. 198 by air. Oladokin tries to add to All that. All right, fumble. Lost the handle. But he recovered the ball. So on second and 10, quarterback fumbled the ball, but recovered it. So it should be a loss of maybe, maybe, extra, maybe five yards. So about a good five to six yard loss. How they came out and started this game. They're going backwards. Uh, here, third 21. They're probably going to run a screen play or something. Just, you know, punt the football back. Uh, well, okay. So Eastern Tennessee um, head coach used to be FSU office coordinator when Jimbo was at FSU. He will be taken down. Jingleton, among others, who forced the action. All right, so Stanford will punt the ball back. Fourth and 23. They'll punt the ball back to Eastern Tennessee. To East Tennessee. Tennessee. 
timeouts left. Can they put together a drive right. to get at least a field goal to take the lead to hopefully win this ball game? This game rep, this so now all game. East Tennessee has to do to march the ball and run the clock. Tight going down the wire. They played a seven point game in Birmingham. Fair catch at the 29, uh, the 34 yard line. So they'll get the ball back at their own 34. Earlier in the telecast, ETSU, they lost nine times in 2019. Six of those losses were by seven points. They lost twice in overtime. They were 0 and 2. Sanford had four overtime games in 2019. They were 1 and 3. But to me, a stat that will. Be one that lingers for a long time. The Bulldogs last season, they won a game by allowing 55 points. They lost a game when they scored 58. And you wonder why they changed over the defensive staff. Obviously, not the high-scoring affair like those here this afternoon. Holmes continues to do good work as he gets close to 120 yards on the ground. And that's what I'm saying. The, the, the game plan is really set up for the issue on offense. Get the ball, you know, get the ball to your playmakers, you know, don't get too cute, pull a guard, pull a tight end around, and just play smash mouth football. You're going to get six, seven yards a pop because you have the playmakers that allow you to get that, that kind of production. Uh, it's not rocket science here. They, they try to get too cute and fancy with all these different, you know, in the rounds and, and uh, different passes. Run the football and keep the momentum um, on your side. Boy, for a moment, I thought Edmonds, uh, safety number 47 for Sanford, was going to step in front All right, so East Tennessee is looking at a three and four, third and four. Ball at the um, their own 41-yard line. You know, I, I just don't understand why they put this kind of – they put this guy in this kind of position. Instead, giving the ball to your workforces that have the experience. Uh, the I like my Lakers all the way, sir. <laughs> That's not even a question for me. I'm taking my Lakers in any game they play. All right, East Tennessee on the run. Touchdown, East Tennessee. So for the first time, they, they got their first lead of the game with a touchdown. The that was a strike the on third and four. Nice catch. Nice um, run straight down the sideline. Touchdown. Okay, so all East Tennessee now would have to do play good defense, run out the clock. You don't have any help behind you. You're the last, um, you know, safety valve. It's kind of hard to make that uh, make that play of trying to go for the pick. You don't have any help behind you. But I think we had a guy jump off sides here on the PAT. 59 yards, Tyler Rydell. Julian Lane Price. First touchdown toss of the year for Rydell. And the second of his early ETSU career. We'll see another attempt by Keltner at the extra point, I believe we will. Will mean he'll be closer than he normally would for an extra point try. It should not be a factor. The wind, by the way, blowing from his right to left. We'll see if Sanford has the ability to come off the deck with 5.28 to go. Here are timeouts. Piece of cake for Kelvin. He continues a good run in his career. All right. So you got a 24 to 17 ball game here. 
East Tennessee is up seven points. Yeah, it's very interesting. Game. But you see here, you know, that, that's just a great play um, by Rydell making a tough throw. And, uh, you know, his guy was able to make the catch and, and finish it for a touchdown. And that's the, again, Coach Sanders talked about it. We talked about it. A lot of games last year because they couldn't make that one play like this. This play right here may be the game changer for this ETSU team. Um, to really get them over the edge to get more wins than losses uh, at the end of the year. So it's going to be interesting. You know, Sanford right now, um, you know, Chris Oladoku has not had a good possession the past few possessions, and each issue's defense has been able to pick up a lot of momentum and confidence. Um, with 528 to go left in the fourth quarter, this should be a dandy. That was the first career touchdown reception for the redshirt sophomore, Julian Lane Price. In the state of Tennessee. Yeah, we play Appalachian State the second game of the season. That's a home game for Miami, so I'll, I will be at that home game. I already got tickets for it. Georgia Southern has always made a name for themselves, you know, even though they're not on Division One. All right, so we got a player injured on the field for Sanford. Hopefully it's not a, an attempt to, you know, Run um that's basically extra time out. Hopefully it's not that. You know they do that a lot these days. All right, so this game is almost in the bags. Coming off the field from Sanford. Field from Sanford. Over the shadows, we showed you the shot of the folks in the stands all bundled up. It has the look of a November. Yeah, and we're kind of going reverse because I was supposed by March or April. I think the stadiums, it'll feel like a, a September kind of thing, or maybe even a late August. Atmosphere. Like I said, guys, this game is wrapping up. I can't wait for that, Pete. I told you, I love the heat. I love, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spring to summer guy. I'm not really a big winter fan. 3% capacity allowed here at Green Stadium. Different capacities around the SOCON, so think about checking out a game. Probably best to check the website of the school you're going to go see, watch, play. All right, Sanford quarterback rolling out. Bobbing that time. Overthrows his receiver. Yeah, I thought AJ Tony might continue to run down the sideline because he looks like he had already beat his guy. And usually, when your quarterback is rolling out like that, you want to kind of get to an open area so your quarterback can find you and deliver the football. But here, we got a big third and six right here, Pete. Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if this is too oh, narrow okay. territory just because of how. Yeah, so a lot of them guys, you know, that went to those schools or other schools. Tend to you know come back and get jobs somewhere in the in those um in those schools that they're you know familiar with. Hopefully, a lot of those guys could you know get some experience to move on up in the, um to Division One and then you know. Head coaching yeah, positions and such for it, but nonetheless, you know, but it's a great start, especially for um a, a coach that needs some experience. A 
Ozzy will look to return. And out of bounds he goes. Take another look at that previous pass. Yeah, OG, um, I had got some information about him from um, Cole Perry. So I read through the information and stuff like that. And we, we got a good we got a good recruiter here. Not only that, his dad is at um Northwestern as the principal. So you already know Northwestern has been pretty good to Miami in the past couple of years now. I would expect to see a big dose of So we definitely got a good a good deal here with Ishmael. Like I said, when we first when they first got reported, I thought they was hiring him as just as analysis. As an analyst, I'm sorry. So that kind of pissed me off a little bit, but I, well, you was here, so you already know. <laughs> but now that I know that he is hired as a linebacker coach, um, outside linebacker coach, and he is a great recruiter, then you know what, man, he's off the hook again. <laughs> yeah, but dude's gonna be a. I think he'll be good for Miami, man. Like I said, we always hype about T. Will, and we know that was going to be a big shooter for uh, the field once he left. But nonetheless, I got to give Manny his props. I jumped the gun on that one. All right, so East Tennessee, they got the ball, second and five, running up the gut. Maybe a pickup of two yards that'll bring up third down, maybe third down and three. Three minutes and a half to go. They're up by seven. Ball at their own 20 yard line. All right, so let's see if East Tennessee can pick up a first down and get themselves, you know, out of this game with a W. But keep in mind that Sam Samford still got all three of their timeouts. So this will be a crucial third down. Third and two. So Eastern East Tennessee will waste a timeout. They will waste a timeout. They had two. Now they only have one. Basically lined up to see what um, Samford would um, come out with defensive-wise. Call the timeout. Now let's see where it goes from here. They, if they pick up a, um, a second down, uh, uh, if they pick up a first down, it'll be crucial. They could probably possibly run the clock out on them. But keep in mind, Samford still do have three timeouts. So... And that's kind of that's kind of been the story for this ETSU team in the past. You know, a lot of these games have been 50 50 games. Where, you know, yeah, you know, you know, it, they um, all just get these titles. Play. Basically, Here, when they so when they do they move on from the University of Miami one day, one you know, they all have these titles under their resume, so. It'll make them look better. All right, Sanford runs the ball. So on third and second, they they run the ball. So. Run the ball, picked up one yard, so it's fourth and one. So fourth and one on their own 20, um, 22 yard line. I'm sorry, fourth and two on their own 22 yard line. They will punt the ball back to Samford. So Samford will get the ball back. Right now it's two minutes and 42 seconds left in the game. Down by seven, so... Sanford will get their, their opportunity to tie this game up. Great get for the staff for Randy Sanders here at ETSU and Tyler Keltner. No coincidence at all is one of the best kickers in the Southern Conference. And this is four field goal tries a year ago. He's perfect in his career 
All right, so right now, Eastern Tennessee is lining up the punt. Look like their head coach is on the sideline in a, in a um in a hover around wheelchair. You know, to have coaches like this on his staff uh, just just goes to show you the type of character uh, that we have here. All right, so punt is off. Nice punt. Nice bounce for East Tennessee. So Sanford will get the ball back around their own twenty six. Around their own twenty six yard line. So two two and a half minutes to go. Um, Samford with with two to, with two um timeouts. So they will have to march the um march almost the length of the field, score a touchdown to tie it up. If not, East Tennessee he will have the opportunity to walk out of there with a win. Quarterback's in the pocket. He's being flushed out. Rolls and passes caught. Maybe a eight-yard pickup. Um, he did fumble the ball, but they're saying the ground caused the fumble. Therefore, maybe an eight-yard pickup. Uh, that double play could have been there, but he just didn't have enough time to sit in the pocket and get the ball out. All right, so clock is rolling, first and 10. Stanford sit back to pass, pass to the sideline is pretty covered by the um, cornerback. Pass incomplete, second and 10. Stadium. All right, third, second and ten. Ball is handoff. Broke two tackles and picked up about six yards. So initially it would have been a tackle for a loss if they had made the initial tackle. In the backfield, as soon as he handed off, broke two tackles. And got tackled for a six yard game. Third and four. Quarterback rolls. Look like he's short of the first down. Should be fourth and maybe fourth and maybe an inch. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. Clock is rolling. Hands the ball off up the middle, first down. So clock is still rolling. Um, they'll stop the clock for the the move to change. The move to change. Clock is rolling. Forty nine seconds and in, in counting. First and ten, right across the fifty yard line. Quarterback has the ball. They whistle it dead. So illegal procedure against Sanford will be a penalty to back him up. 39 seconds left in the game. They might put some time back on the clock. Hmm. Okay, so 39 seconds left in the game, first and 15. Sanford must score in order to stay in this game. And again, if you're ETSU on defense, you played a great second half. You've done a fantastic job. Don't get if you're an East Tennessee fan right now, you're sitting on the edge of your seat. If you're a Stanford fan, you're, you're praying. That they could get this done, but there's 39 seconds left in the game. Timeout. Sanford spends a timeout. This drive, this these next couple of downs is crucial. If they don't get in the end zone, they will lose this game. So 
Second time out, you. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of believe that too. Um, OG King. All right, so here we go. First and fifteen from the fifty-yard line. Short pass. First tackle miss. Runs out of bounds at around the. 37 yard line of um of Eastern Tennessee. So they're in good good field position right now. But can't go for no field goals. Field goals will not win this game. All right. Blitz game. Pass pass is caught. At about the 26 yard line of Eastern Tennessee, clock is they're moving the chain, so the clock is temporarily stopped. So, okay, second and two, pass through across the middle, broken up, incomplete. So, second and ten. Great way to start back the season, right? With a thriller coming down to the end like this. Absolutely, Billy Gus. Um, Bully Gas, or whatever you want to call yourself. Bully Gus. All right. 14 seconds. Ball is deflected, intercepted. Eastern Tennessee with the key interception with nine seconds left in the game. And that will seal the ball game, folks. So crucial, crucial interception. Quarterback throws the ball, ball padded up in the air, stood in the air long enough for the defender, number 30, to pick it off. And that'll be your ball game, folks. What, what a way to end it. Interception, nine seconds left. All they have to do now is go out there and kneel, and that's ball game. Tyree Robinson was a big part of the effort as they figured things out after a couple of long scoring drives for Sanford in the opening quarter, but ETSU. Yeah, that'll be a ball game, game folks. So East Tennessee and will come away with a victory. Spring of 2021 will have the same final score in terms of numbers as the last time they got together in 2019 with this particular afternoon as ETSU coming out on top. So who's my favorite team? The Miami Hurricanes, sir. I am a huge Miami Hurricane fan. That is my team, the Miami Hurricanes. So East Tennessee came away with the victory. Let's um, I'm gonna take a look at the other game, see what the scores are, see where they're at.
teacher here. Right. All right, so Mercer lost today to um Wilford. <laughs> Doki, so why don't give me this? All right, so. Man, Foreman is beating West Western Carolina 35 to 7. That's not even dang. Wolford beat uh Mercer 31 to 14. Eastern Tennessee just won their game 24 to 17. And North Dakota beats um Southern Illinois 44 to 21. Also, final score for Ellen. Um, over um, 20, 26 to 23 over Davidson. So basically, fourth quarter, four, four minutes and 40, 41 seconds left. Foreman's up 35 to 7. That game should be over pretty soon. So that'll be it for college football for today, you know. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for tuning in to the stream. You know, we got some spring football nonetheless. No, Probably nobody's favorite teams, but nonetheless, still got some football to watch. I'll be doing these um, every week, every um, Saturday. I'll try to do these, you know, since we're, we're in the off season. We're in, you know, not much to talk about, not, not much football, sports, or whatever. So, if anybody want to tune in or, you know, share the stream with somebody, that's great. But thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to hang it up right here. Uh, Miami just got a new um, linebacker coach, Ishmael. Y'all go check him out. Um, I, I did a video on him, but y'all go do your research on this guy. He's a pretty he's a pretty good guy, man. Pretty good um, catch, pretty good uh, recruiter. So, you know, it does got a, um, a good resume, Texas A&M, Auburn, you name it. So, y'all go check him out. His, um, his, his dad is the principal at Northwestern. So, you know, Miami recruit Northwestern all the time. So, that's, that's you know, that's a plus. But, hey, thank y'all for tuning in. Um, next time, next week, 
it'll be a lot easier to do because I'll, I'll have double, I'll, I'm setting up my stream to where instead of just using my laptop, I'm going to have another, I'm going to have another monitor on here so I could, you know, navigate a little bit better between, you know, watching the game and the chat and all that good stuff. So appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all have a God blessed day.